The Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV proudly presents Kentucky Christian University football. This KCU football game is brought to you in part by Clark's Pump and Shops of the Tri-State, Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy in South Shore, Members' Choice Credit Union, First National Bank of Grayson and Cannonsburg, Trey Hermanos Nunez Mexican Restaurant, River Cities Builders, a and a Porta Potties, and Kentucky Christian University. Now, let's go to the field for the pregame show as the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV presents exciting Kentucky Christian University football. Uh, very quickly, we're going to step out and take a break. But just, just real quick, Coach, speak about uh, the different look that we see here on, on, on Thursday night right now, but but college football team here, the different look that we see. Well, obviously it's exciting to, everybody, to get everybody started here on college football. <clears throat> I'm going to see some up-tempo uh, from both teams tonight. They both want to play fast. Uh, they both feature uh, the same type of defense. Uh, both uh, work out of a 4-3 structure. Uh, so it's almost kind of like looking in a mirror for these teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Georgetown has historically, you know, uh, uh, dominated this series. But in the very last game that they played back in 19, uh, Casey was able to come out with uh, with an upset victory. Yep. So, uh, you know, early in the season, both teams are excited. I'm sure both coaches are excited. And uh, so and, and along with the fans, and we'll get this thing going. Absolutely. I forgot to mention Georgetown, uh, new head coach this year, Coach Chris Oliver, uh, and, and bringing a little bit different style of offense here uh, to, uh, to Georgetown, and we're looking forward to bringing you all the action. We're going to step out for break number one here in the pregame. When we return, uh, Coach Terry and I will talk a little bit about what we can expect here tonight, and uh, then we'll hear from KCU head coach Jake Russell. So don't go away back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. 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 When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best Around. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members Choice Credit Union. Members Choice Credit Union has programs for first time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members Choice Credit Union today. Members Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. In addition to the Greenup location, Stultz Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hanna Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy. With the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hanna Drive, South Shore. Stultz Pharmacy. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. And we're back here in Grayson. Chauncey Griffith joined by Coach Brent Terry. Coach, I forgot to mention earlier, thanks for being here with me, man. Well, uh, my pleasure. And, uh, you know, 
not used to having football on Thursday, especially not college football, but here we are week one of the college season. And, uh, Coach, we did this, we did. I did one game last year for KCU. You, you and I did the spring game here together. And uh, now here we are watching pregame. What are some things you notice about this new look? Because it is a new look KCU team. What are some things you notice? Well, just, you know, from the spring, uh, it looks like they've kind of picked up the tempo on offense. Uh-huh. Uh, they want to play as quick as they can, uh, at least in, in warm-ups. I've not seen them practice in the preseason, but at least in warm-ups, they were a lot of 10 personnel, which uh, what we mean is no tight end, four wide receivers. Right. Uh, that's kind of the way they structure uh, their thing. They're uh, going to be up-tempo. Uh, they want to snap the ball as quickly as possible, kind of keep you keep the defense off rhythm, try to make the defense be simple in their approach. And so, uh, but that kind of offense uh, um, requires that you keep the chains moving and that uh, you, if you have uh, short possessions, you kind of put your defense back out there. So it's going to be imperative uh, that they're able to, uh, you know, get some first downs, keep the clock moving, um, because uh, they're certainly a little bit of an underdog coming here against Georgetown. Absolutely. One thing I'll say, though, personnel-wise, just looking – uh, out on the field, you know, Coach Russell is getting his team, his personnel, to fit his style of football. Yeah, well, a, a whole season, another season, another off season mm-hmm. of strength and conditioning. Uh, looks like it's made a big difference in these guys. You Absolutely. can tell a difference in a lot of these guys from just the spring until uh, now. Uh, it looks like they, you know, put in the work in the weight room. They have a good looking team um, out there on the hoof, they, and uh, so excited to see where they can match up with Georgetown or not. That's right. So, as far as KCU and Georgetown go, like you said earlier, they haven't played since 2019. And actually, that was the first time KCU had ever beat Georgetown in the history of the Kentucky Christian Unity Foot- or University football program. Uh, actually, Georgetown leads 11-1 to in that series. And then um, that was when KCU started in the AAC. So, that, that, that kind of explains the, the drop on the, the schedule and things like that. But – Lucky to have the you know the in-state rivalry kind of pick back up here and uh, getting things going. Uh, uh, week one of the uh, NAIA football season, um, Coach KCU. I mentioned earlier they're three and eight last year, two and four in the AAC. This year they're preseason ranked number three behind yeah. two of the top programs in the nation, Reinhardt and Bluefield. Yeah, so that's you know, that's exciting. I think they feel like they have a team that can compete in the AAC this year. Um, that's a very competitive you know small school conference. Um, and uh, they've got uh, some of their bigger games here at uh, the stadium. So, and this is a great kind of non-conference uh, test for them. It's good, you know. We got, like I said, the in-state rival. It's a short trip, you know, up from Georgetown up here to Grayson. Sure. So, you know, it makes sense uh, that uh, that these two teams uh, get together again. You know, like I said, they haven't played in a while. Uh, so, this is a nice out-of-conference matchup. You know, and Georgetown comes in ranked uh, 15th right. uh, in NAIA. Kentucky Christian's unranked at this point, but uh, you know, with a good showing in the AEC, they may if they can get off to a good start. If they happen to win this game tonight, they'll quickly find themselves ranked. That's right, Coach. We're going to step out, take another break. Uh, when we return, we'll hear from KCU head coach Jake Russell, and after that, we got a whole lot of football for you. Don't go away. Back after this on the Cool Hit Sports Network. Need some extra money for home improvements or other purchases? How about a home equity line of credit with absolutely no closing costs? We have some exciting news from our loan department at First National Bank. Right now, open a home equity line of credit at First National and we will pay all the fees at closing. Hurry into one of our eight locations to take advantage of this great offer. First National Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Does your gas station or convenience store need a facelift? If so, call River City Builders at 473-4112 for your remedy. Big or small projects, River City's Builders is a company for all your needs. We have extensive experience in the petroleum industry, from routine gas dispenser and canopy maintenance to above-ground, underground tank and piping work to full-blown remodels and new builds. Call River City Builders at 473-4112 for all your petroleum needs. We'll cover your back and keep your customers pumping gas. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let A&A Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, A&A Porta Potties are here to assist you. A&A Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. A&A Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. 
Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. Coach, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here with the uh, with the interview with Coach uh, Russell. Let's try that one more time. Let's try it one more time. To be here, beautiful night, ready for the first game in college football this season. That's what I'm saying, man. I'm looking forward to it. And a new look Kentucky Christian University team this year. Yeah, a lot of new faces. Uh, got a great uh, group of transfers in last spring and built on that with a great recruiting class. Young guys, some experienced guys, transfers, JUCO, a uh, little bit of everything, and they've just meshed so well. One of the beauties of college football, bringing guys in from all over the country, all different backgrounds. And uh, this group's gotten really close, and that's half the battle there, getting them to buy in to, to each other and really start to build that chemistry. And obviously a ton of talent. I think everybody will see that tonight. And uh, a, a great, great opponent who will have a lot of talent as well. I mean, these, these are the games that you, you, you live for. I mean, this is the these are the exciting ones, and these are the ones these guys love to play in. Absolutely, Coach. You mentioned new talent, new transfers, all that. And you look at the roster, the starting 11 on offense and defense, it's not just freshmen and sophomores. You've got a lot of upperclassmen in the mix. Yeah, had uh, 19 seniors last year, so obviously going to be some new guys out there um, this year. Some guys came in in the spring, really established their roles and, and built off of that this fall camp. Um, and then definitely got some new guys that came in and made some noise early. Uh, like you said, only a couple returning starters on each side of the ball. Um, so going to be a lot of new faces, some guys that our fans will fall in love with, really exciting players, and they're going to take KCU to uh, places they've never been this fall. Absolutely. Coach, what can we expect offensively? Anything different this year? Uh, similar last year schematically, but uh, just getting those those guys into the spots that can make plays with the ball in their hand, ball in space, offense, um, offensive line. Uh, Coach Lane's doing a phenomenal job with them, getting them to really buy into being physical yep. um, and dominating the game from the first snap and just building from that. you got to establish the run first to set up the play action and build into your passing game. Sounds like a plan for success. Hey, before we go, what are the keys to a win? Yeah, score more points than the other team, right? <laughs> Man, first game, there's so much uh, stuff that's hard to predict, it's even as far as, you know, what they're running on both sides of the ball. We, we kind of have an idea on offense. You know, they got a new defensive coordinator um, that none of us have ever coached against or sure. played against or anything. So we're really just focusing on ourselves, just execute at a high rate on both sides of the ball. Just, you know, one guy um, and 11 at a time doing their assignment right, playing with great effort and great passion and everybody just pouring into each other. And, uh, you know, the score at the end of the night will take care of itself if we can do that. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members' Choice Credit Union. Members' Choice Credit Union has programs for first-time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members' Choice Credit Union today. Members' Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. In addition to the Greenup location, Stelts Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hanna Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy. With the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hanna Drive, South Shore. Stultz Pharmacy. Back in Grayson here, Chauncey Griffith, Brent Terry, coach. Almost time for kickoff. Uh, while we got a second, we'll go ahead and take a look at the starting lineups as the players come off the field for the coin toss. I didn't see who won. Did you see? No. We'll go ahead and go over the. Offensive starters for the KCU Knights. Uh, starting at quarterback tonight will be number 17, that's Kajika Sarvis. Running back number five, senior Gerald Daniels. And actually, we're going to take a break here, take a pause. We're going to pause for the playing of our national anthem here. Always a good opportunity to stand for that. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. 
day. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given to each and every one of us, God. We thank you for being able to be here this evening. We ask for your hand of safety to be upon both teams, that we go through this contest injury-free and without incident. Father, we ask that uh, you give us safe traveling mercies as everyone goes home. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're back here. We'll go ahead and take a look now at those starting lineups, starting with the KCU Knights offense. Quarterback Kajika Sarvis, running back uh, Gerald Daniels, a senior. At wideouts, we're going to have uh, Tavion and Zine and Donche Gaither. Uh, at slot receivers tonight, uh, sophomore Richmond Sims, as well as senior Corey Garcia up front for the KCU offense, starting at center, uh, senior number 70, Gabe Singleton. Right guard, Jacob Johnson, he wears number 74, he's a sophomore. Right tackle, freshman, number 56, Manasseh Rippert. Left guard, number 59, Sion Mawala, he's a senior. And left tackle, number 51, C.J. Deals, junior. And it's going to be, it looks like, Coach, KCU is going to be kicking off, so it's going to be Georgetown football to start things out. Yeah, they're going to get, we'll get a, a first uh, look at their new offensive scheme. You know, the new coach comes in, Coach Oliver, Lindsey Wilson for 12 years, I do believe. Uh -huh. uh, won a national championship down there. He's going to bring a, a different style of offense to Georgetown. Up tempo. Uh, they're going to snap the ball quickly uh, as they can. They're going to try to make conditioning a part of this game. Right. Uh, it is warm, uh, but not uh, the humidity's down a little bit. It's a great evening for football. Yes, sir. You know, we've still got plenty of daylight left. Um, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Remember, there are no scrimmage games in college, right, unlike in high school where, right. you, get, where you get a scrimmage opponent. So right. there's always you don't get a lot of these uh, special teams reps and you don't get a lot of reps against another or any reps against another team. So always uh, working out those early season jitters. Yes, sir. It's that time, though. Paul Rodriguez with the hand in the air. And the kick is in the air, and here we go. No, not in the air. It's going to be an onside kick to start things out. And it looks like Kentucky Christian University on the football, and they are down uh, making the recovery there. Braden Long, and it's KCU football, Coach. What a way to start things out. Yeah, the anatomy of an upset, right? Still in a possession somewhere. So they start off the season with a little short a dribble onside kick right up the middle, and it um, looks like they got back on it. So yes, sir. You know, I'll tell you what, just to give credit where credit's due, I'm a Paul Rodriguez fan. I'm a fan of the KCU kicker. Great quality individual. But i tell you what, he placed that ball right where it needed to be. Yeah, he did a great job there. The only question was, and they're huddled out there, is was there a first touching? It appeared that maybe a KCU player touched that ball just before it went 10 yards. Because the rule is it has to go 10 yards before the kicking team can touch the football. That is correct, and I do believe they are calling first touching. I saw the uh, the head referee there, uh, um, <clears throat> Darren Barry Bray, uh, signal uh, first touching, and they're going to move that ball uh, back into uh, KCU territory. So uh, Georgetown's going to start with great field position. Absolutely. First drive. And I tell you what, you, you can probably hear it through our microphones here in in the the stadium. Hey, everybody in the place was on their feet for as that happened and right afterwards. But now, kind of like a little letting a little air out of the balloon around here. 
Yeah, they, they needed to, uh, took a chance on stealing the possession there, and I'm telling you, they were very, very close. Uh, Absolutely. They just, uh, one of the KCU kids there just barely touched that ball about the eight yard mark. I think it was a good call. Yeah, um, I so do too. Here comes the KCU defense out on the field. Georgetown is already out there and ready to go. And they're ready to go. They're, the quarterback's going through his cadence as the defense makes their way out on the field. Ball's not been blown in, uh, the whistle's not been blown yet. And here comes the whistle. And here comes motion to the right-hand side. That makes it trips right, running back offset to the right. It's going to be a pass out of the backfield to the right side. The pass is caught by number 89, and that is Jacob James. He comes up on the right-hand side for a gain of about four yards, yeah, three nice, yards. Nice play out of the secondary there by Jacob Wright. Comes up, makes a nice open field tackle, keeps it to about a four-yard gain. Absolutely. Quarterback for uh, Georgetown today, number 12, Drew Hart's a junior, six foot three, 200 pounds, good looking uh, football player. Motion to the left out of the backfield, two runnings backs, goes to one, a pass to the left, almost brought down the backfield, and a good job by the KCU defense there, swarming to the football for a tackle for a loss there on that pass out of the backfield, coach. Yeah, guess who? Jacob Wright again yes, makes sir. a nice open field tackle, so two you know, uh, side to side, uh, lateral type passes there, uh, trying to outnumber KCU as they make some personnel changes and they get into their third down package. So far, two two uh, deep motions, or two jet motions, I should say, and two passes out of the backfield. Here we go. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, running back offset to the right of the quarterback, and here we go. Shotgun snap. And it looks like they were trying to hard count them there, coach. You're going through a cadence, trying to get KCU defense to jump. Nothing happened and uh, looking back over the sideline to get another play. Here we go. The Play the, clock is run down. That should be delay. And it is. A whistle blown as the ball snapped. And that's going to be five yards against the Georgetown offense. Yep, so they try to catch uh, They try to catch a look at uh, the, uh, the KCU defense there. They take a little bit too long, try to look back to the uh, sideline to get a second play, and the play clock runs out on them. That's right, and a great job there we should mention too by the KCU defense, presence of mind of, of watching the football because that's a big deal to snap count. Absolutely. Especially here early on. Right, trying to hold your water there, make sure you don't give up any free yards. Same same formation. We do have a wing back to the left, two receivers to the right, one to the left, running back offset to the uh, right of the quarterback, and the shotgun snap goes uh, we've got a drop back pass this time first one we've seen of this game he finds a receiver in the middle and the pass is knocked away intended receiver there Cade Mullins and a good job there by uh, the, the, I think that was a free safety coach, Latavius Johnson, there knocking that pass away. Now, Johnson does a great night, great job of getting on the hip. They had a crossing route coming from left to right as we're looking at it here. He got on his hip, made a nice play with his right arm and knocked that ball away. It's hard. It, th those middle of the field passes are dangerous. Yeah, because he had plenty of time to throw the ball. So, sure. four down territory, though, they're going to go for it. Yes, sir. Fourth and long. Fourth and about 13 yards. And we've got a whistle here over toward the KCU sideline. It's going to be a timeout. Kentucky Christian University. We're going to keep it right here. Um, coach, thoughts? Well, you, you, you know, you hate to take a timeout on your first series there, but an important down, you get, you have the onside kick, right? You think you've got it. You're emotionally, you're up for it. You know, you get excited. Then you, first touching occurs. Sure. As you said, a little air kind of came out of the stadium. Uh -huh. But we get two, uh, two nice plays there to put them in a third and long. They get the delay of game, pushes yep. them back even more. Have a nice uh, bre pass break up there on third down. So fourth, they're behind the chains. Fourth down, 13. Uh, ball on about the 46-yard line. So uh, a big play here early in the game. Yeah. Uh, KCU takes just one to make sure that they got the right personnel on the field uh, and that they got the right defense called here. Here will be the thing. Are they going to heat them up here on fourth down or are they going to play coverage? There's, uh, yep. So we'll see what they do here. Uh, I imagine they might. They brought a little pressure there on the uh, on the second down play to get the to get the tackle for loss on sure. third down. They played coverage, uh, so we'll see what they do here on fourth down. And that's what I was going to say. I almost cut you off there. That we've seen a little bit of both of them, so yeah. it's it's hard telling here. No, no personnel change for the for the offense. We the offense is still out. And here we go. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Running back offset to the left. We've got a tight end on the right side, and the quarterback steps back. And it's going to be a punt, a quarterback punt. Uh, and it's uh, taking, a, taking a big roll and a big time stop there. I believe he stopped it on about the one yard line. That's going to be a touchback, yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought he had it before. I couldn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, he touched it there and it kind of uh, rolled into the end zone. Okay, but uh, okay. hey, really, really cool call there by Coach yeah. Oliver, right? Yes. They kind of try to draw him off sides and I then like they line it. up in the shotgun formation and quick kick it. 
you know, uh, doesn't work out as far as uh, as far as getting it inside the 20. It sure. rolls into the end zone, but uh, you gain uh, you know, 25 yards there, 24 yards on the on the kick. And so uh, KCU's first look on offense. Yeah, and sometimes adding to that punt there real quick, sometimes out of those, you know, when you line up in your offense, quarterback punts, sometimes those punts are kind of ugly. That one got the job done. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Uh, they become very close to down that inside the five. And here we go, KCU offense back out on the field. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Motion in the backfield. Wing back goes to the right-hand side. A handoff up the middle, and it's gobbled up right before the line of scrimmage there, Coach. So the, I think the interior defense just kind of collapsed in and blew that play up before it had a chance to develop. Yeah, so they come out in uh, in, in 21 personnel, and they got an H-back in the game there and uh, or a full back. You know, it kind of depends on how you want to look at it. They try to go with the inside zone play, not much going on there. Uh-huh. Looks like we're going to have about the same form. No, we're, we're two by two now. We've got a, two receivers to the left, two to the right, running back offset to the right of the quarterback in the shotgun. Uh, quarterback Kajika Sarvis in the gun. He's calling a, calling a couple signals here, takes this, the snap, steps back. He's under a heavy pressure, able to fight through it, but not able to fight through all of it. He steps up. Like he's going to take off out of the pocket, and he's just kind of he's just kind of hit from behind. There. Jacob Harmon, right there, the three technique. They <laughs> yeah. run a little inside stunt where the uh, what we call it a, an end tackle game. The end comes inside, he loops around, becomes and he makes uh, makes the play there. Comes around the edge, beats the tackle, and and uh, causes the sack. I think a guy I know uh, used to be a defensive coordinator. I know uh, would call that a twist. Yeah, is that right? Yep, yep. yep. Get a little twist, little uh, end tackle stunt there. Uh, his name's Brett Terry, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> same. Nope. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. We've got a tight end this time, a drop back pass and a short pass intended over the middle to the right just a little bit uh, for Richmond Sims. Ball just not 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 catchable. Yeah, behind quick him. pressure there again. Yeah. Uh, that time's out of D.J. White, number three, defensive end there for Georgetown. Quick pressure, kind of forces an early throw. Yeah. You know, but he doesn't make the big mistake. You know, the, the thing there, he, he put it in the spot where it wasn't going to get intercepted. You know, and so, you know, want to end every series with a kick, you know, whether it's sure. an extra point or, you sure. know, we don't want to turn over down that inside uh, inside our own red zone. So, they'll punt it away here. Fourth down, 16 yards to go. Ball's on about the 14-yard line of KCU, and Paul Rodriguez on the punt. And the kick is in the air, a high punt. It's crossing the 40-yard line. It's going to drop about the 45-yard line, so not cross midfield, but a, a decent punt there uh, gets – gets at least gets the Georgetown offense out of the red zone by about 25 yards. Yeah, Dylan Warren with the fair catch there. And again, Georgetown in uh, excellent field position. Absolutely. Real quick while I've got a second, the offensive starters for Georgetown, receiver Dylan Warren. These are the, two, the, the three receivers, Dylan Warren, Aaron Maggard, and Frank Eluga. Left tackle, Owen Stinnett. Left guard, Boots Ellett. Uh, center, Blake Gossett, right guard, Peyton Bartley, right tackle, Max Hill, uh, quarterback, Drew Hartz, running, running back, Isaiah Cobb, tight end, Caden Mullins. And the first play here is going to be a, a deep pass, but the quarterback finds a check down right over to the right-hand side. And it's caught for a gain of around seven yards. Uh, pass there caught by Dylan Warren. Hartz with a nice job keeping his eyes down the field there, a little scramble to the right. Tied into the left-hand side. It's going to be a handoff up the middle for a first down Georgetown. A uh, gain of around six yards, I believe. And a good job there by the Georgetown offensive line there, just getting the push. And, and yep, Isaiah Cobb getting the ball uh, up inside the tackles there, and they're right back up on the ball. That's first right. down. Trips to the left-hand side, one receiver to the right, empty backfield, tied into the right motion from the number three receiver. Uh, he's going to go back to the backfield and line up to the left of the quarterback, hand off to him. He looks hand off up the right hand side off tackle and uh, a gain of just a little bit, about a yard. Yeah, played very well there by Cameron Arthur coming up from uh, from his linebacker spot and making a play for KCU to keep that to a minimal gain. Cameron Arthur is a name that we'll say quite often. He, he's a leader on of the KCU defense number one, but uh, he's a, he's a he's a a tackler, I guess you'd say. Yeah, it very does a very nice job in open field tackle. He can uh -huh. blitz, he can play coverage, do a little bit of everything for this defense. Two by two motion out of the backfield to the left. Another one of those swing passes out of the backfield and the uh, ball just too low in, yeah. be, in between his feet. Hart uh, with a, a kind of a poor throw there, I think he'd even tell you that. Yeah, third down at about nine yards to go there after the incompletion. And it uh, looks like Georgetown offense slowing things down a little bit. 
Yeah, but they want to make sure they've got a good play here on uh, third and eight, third and nine. They want to make sure they got the right play, even though I'm sure they're figuring on uh, two downs to get this. Sure. We've got two by two here and uh, running back offset to the left-hand side of the quarterback out of the gun is Hartz. He steps back, looks to his right, no re open receivers there, finds one over the middle of the field to his left, and that's going to be a first down Georgetown. Catch there made by, looks like Tyler Robertson. Is that who that is, number nine? He's still down on the field. Uh, looks like, not sure what's going on there. Yeah, looks like he took uh, receiver. I can't quite get a number on him 85. yet. 85, I'm way off, Coach. <laughs> That's Matt Miller. Yeah, he took a pretty good shot there, I think, just to the midsection maybe. I, 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 I swear know. I think it's his, his, his calf or okay. his, his shin, something like that. But he's still down on the field. Uh, thoughts and prayers for him, for yeah. sure. So the key to that player, though, are the guys up front from Georgetown, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Plenty of time, uh, plenty of time to let that route develop down the field. They need, you know, eight, nine yards there. Uh, they get a nice pickup. They get the first down, but plenty of time. Hart does a good job being patient, steps up in the pocket, delivers a nice ball on the in-breaking route. And it is it was a catch, and it is a first down. But like you said, he took a, took a, a hit there, and it looked to me, too, like it was right at, around the midsection. But I swear they're looking at his, his lower left leg there. Yeah, hard to speculate. You, know, you never want to do that, but he does appear to be uh, – to be in some pain down there, but you don't want to you don't want to speculate on what's going on. Sure. Um, one thing you did mention there that I did kind of want to revisit uh, while we got a second here. Um, you mentioned the, the Georgetown offensive line and how how the Hearts is having plenty of time to find open receiver, plenty of the pockets there, and it stays there for to let let the play develop, and that's kind of been the difference here in in these long plays. KCU, not so much. They're not having, you know, the quarterback, Kajakasar, was having to either scramble or, or just designed running plays because of that that time is not there. Yeah, Sarvis didn't have much time to do anything uh, uh, when, when KCU's got the ball. And if they're going to be they're going to be able to push the ball down the field, and they're going to have to be able to give him a little bit more time. But, and like I said, on the flip side, um, that offensive line there uh, for uh, Georgetown led by Max Hill, uh, he's a senior out of Paris, Kentucky. And he seems to be the uh, kind of uh, uh, emotional leader of that offensive line. Sure, sure. Uh, it looks like he's uh, been there for a while. And they're doing a great job of giving uh, him plenty, of uh, giving Hart's plenty of time uh, to find some receivers down the field. And, and no matter how good your secondary is, it's hard to, it's hard to cover for uh, four, maybe even five seconds at a time. Yeah. And uh, Hart's doing a good job stepping up in the pocket. No doubt. Keeping his eyes down the field and delivering a nice ball. As uh, – Matt Miller carried off the field there. Thoughts and prayers go out to him. We never want to see anybody get hurt. Yeah, but, he's uh, not able to put any yeah, weight on that left leg. Going, yeah. yeah, doesn't look good. Nonetheless, uh, KCU defense back out on the field. It's going to be first and 10 from right about the 19-yard line going in for Georgetown. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, tied in uh, to the left this time. And motion from the wide out on the left across and it looks like we'll have another one of those swing passes out of the end zone for a pretty good gain there for uh, Georgetown. It's caught by Dylan Warren for the first down and that gets uh, Georgetown down right at about the five yard line. They're already back on the ball ready to go. Yeah, they run the, they get the motion uh, jet across the formation, swing the back out of the backfield for the nice gain. Two receivers right and it looks like we're gonna have a handoff up the middle and a gain of a few yards there gets them down closer to the end zone, ball not crossing the plane yet, but we're inside the one-yard line, Coach. Yeah. Number two, Isaiah Cobb running up inside, keeping keeping his shoulder square. Uh, they get the ball down here inside the one. They bring in, a uh, looks like maybe another tight end and, uh -huh. uh, and 37, uh, 37, another H-back uh, tight end type. Yep. The, the, and that's the, what we'll get. I guess we call that their heavy package. Yep. So we've got uh, two tight ends. Four-man no. surface to the right. Yes, sir. One running back and – we're going to have a handoff to Cobb again, and he gets it back up to the line of scrimmage, and nothing doing after that. Good job there by KCU defense. I'm trying to get a number up. It's hard to see from up here, Coach, but a good job there by Brian Hughes, the defensive back, I guess, safety. Is yeah. that a called safety blitz, I guess? Well, they're probably just, they're just trying to uh, put some extra guys up on the line Crowd of scrimmage line, here. That's yeah. right. They, you know, they only had uh, – you know, two eligible receivers there, or sure. three with the running backs. So right, they can right. crowd up on the line and get some penetration and get that thing stopped. So third down and three here. 
and uh, they go back to more of a uh, Georgetown goes back to a more traditional personnel package. That's right. Here we go, back in the gun too, running back offset to the left, and we've got I believe a timeout here. Yeah, KC is a little confused on defense right there, and they'll spend their second timeout on defense. With 8:32 to go here in the first quarter from Grayson, Kentucky, we're scoreless. Uh, K Kentucky Christian University, Georgetown College, no score yet, Coach. Yeah, Georgetown certainly threatening right here. Uh, they've got the ball down here on the three-yard line, running yep. the left hash. 8:32 left, their second possession. They're able to run the ball effectively in this in this possession. Uh, the, the big third down catch there on the on the end breaking route um, uh, earlier kind of kept the kept this drive alive. Um, they tried to get it. They tried to go heavy and get it in there on second down, and, and KCU was able to match them and even got a tackle for loss. Right. So third down here. We'll see what kind of we had a large group of people across the field there in the huddle. So I'm not sure what personnel they're going to come out with. Yep. KCU defense the same way. They've got several guys in the huddle here. Coaches upstairs in the booth next to us. You know, trying to determine what personnel package is going to come out for this third down for Georgetown. As Coach Russell, I see him over. He was over speaking with one of the uh, officials. He's got his eye over there on that huddle just to see if he can tell, you yeah. know, who's coming out of it and who's right. going on the field and who's not. And here we go. Looks like the offense out on the ball. It looks like, uh, looks like we've got a little heavier package yeah, in there, Coach. Two I think. receivers. Yep. yep. Two receivers. Tight end, two running backs. Yep. So not the not the starting offense, I guess you'd say. Right. Wide out to the left-hand side. Man-to-man man -man coverage for KCU. Motion, deep motion from the wide out. We're going to have a designed run for the quarterback. He tries to get out there to the pylon, and he's gobbled up for about a two-yard loss there, Coach. Yeah, very nice play there by number 12, Brian Hughes. Uh -huh. That does a great job of pursuing hard. Looked like a design run for the quarterback there. Yeah. They faked the jet, uh, and uh, it almost looked like a little option play off to his left, but uh, gobbled up. So brings up fourth down. Coach Oliver, they're signaling a play. No field goal. No, they're going sir. for the points. Fourth down and goal from the four-yard line. And here we go. We've got uh, motion to the right from the wing back. He goes from left to right. We're going to have a pass over into the end zone. And it's caught for a touchdown Georgetown. A great sprint out pass there uh, for six points. Aaron Maggard on the reception. Yeah, so they sprint it out to the right. They go heavy, two backs to the right. They sprint out to the right. They get they have uh, two receivers to the right. They get a little rub route right there. It looked like uh, 47 um, uh, Sims for KCU kind of got it caught up. In a, it just depends on the perspective, uh, whether it's a rub or a pick. But he, he got, you know, since we're kind of KCU here, we'll say he got picked on that play. And there you go, easy, yeah. Easy throw and catch for, the, for six points. So – Georgetown on the on the board first, and the PAT is good. That makes it seven to zero here, with 8:24 to go in quarter number one. We're going to stick around here as uh, so you know KCU right here. They they've had two defensive possessions where uh, where Georgetown was able to start inside the 50-yard line, and they've not made it easy on Georgetown. Kentucky's defense, Kentucky Christian's defense is playing pretty well. You know, they've just had great field position. They able to go for it on fourth. They had them in a third and long. Georgetown got the conversion. They got them down to fourth down there on the goal line, and they were able to get it in, but uh, they've played pretty stingy. You know, they played pretty good defense last year, um, going you know, all the way back to 21. Um, you know, their total defense was ranked 29th in the country. They only gave up 317 yards a game. Like I said, that's good enough for 29th in the country. That's the right. The problem was um, total offense, 77th in the country. You know, so we got – KCU's going to have to be able to generate some offense here and, uh, and keep uh, Georgetown off the field if they can with their offense. Yeah, you know, they say defense wins championships, and I'm not taking away from that, but you got to score points too. Absolutely. In today's college football, you got to be able to put some points on the board. There you go. Kick off in the air. It's going to drop right inside the five-yard line. It's fielded by KCU's Devontae Williams, and he's gobbled up inside the 15-yard line, right about the 13 by about five different uh, Georgetown Tigers. Yeah, nice job of uh, kickoff coverage there from Georgetown. Uh, they just got down the field. Yeah, not 
They didn't have a lot of uh, opposition there, not a lot of blocking. Uh, and so they're going to start this possession inside the 20, not what they wanted. That's right. I said the 13, and we're about the 16-yard line. So first down and 10 from the 16-yard line for Kentucky Christian University. Uh, two by two set, one receiver uh, or one uh, wing back, one deep back to offset to the right of the quarterback. And here we go. Kajaka Sarvis takes it, hands it off up the middle, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, gain of maybe a yard for uh, Devontae Williams. But D that's about it. DJ White, number three, big defensive end right there. Senior, six foot four, 250 pounds. Not going to be trapped there. Run a little power play back to the left, and uh, he's able to blow up the trap block and make a play. Yes, sir. So, second down, about nine yards to go for the KCU offense. Two by two. Nope. One receiver to the left, two to the right. We've got a tight end to the right as well. So, Trey to the right, running back offset. Uh, to the right, to the left of the quarterback. It's going to be a handoff. He steps left, cuts it right, but nothing there. He's gobbled up there. And another great play by the Georgetown defense. Yeah, uh, very very nice play there. Guess who? Same cat, number three, DJ White. Uh -huh. uh, does a good job of defeating, uh, defeating the block there and making the play on the cutback. Coach, he looks the part too, doesn't he? He is. He's a good looking, very good looking kid. Like I said, he's uh, uh, six foot four, 250 pounds, uh, and there's not much. Uh, not much fat on that young man. No, he's no. lean, and uh, so they go to their third down package. They move him down inside uh, to uh -huh. rush over the guard, and they bring in uh, two defensive ends here for uh, to get some pass rush. Here we go, three receivers to the right, almost jumps off sides there, but the ball overthrown, almost picked off as well there. It's knocked away by Kyron Simpson, and that makes it. So Sarvis knew he had a free play there. Uh, our, our well, guy, I thought yeah. he uh, did. He jump off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We we had our, our guy there that we were just bragging on DJ yeah. White. They moved him down there to three technique, and he jumped in the neutral zone. And and uh, in college football, as most everybody knows, if yeah. that guy doesn't make contact with the offensive line, uh, then uh, the flags. But it's not a, a dead ball in high school. You jump into the neutral zone, it's a dead ball right there, and you mark it off. But uh, Sarvis knew he had a free play, and he just kind of took a shot down the field into into coverage. Yep. Nothing, you know, nothing uh, lost there. See, I didn't see the flag. I thought. Well, he must not cross into the neutral zone. Yep. Here we go. Two by two set, running back offset to the left of Sarvis. And we've got deep motion from left to right from the running back. That is Devontae Williams. Shotgun snap. He looks to his left, throws the ball downfield, and it's overthrown. He was trying to get it out there on a go route to VT Taylor, but unable to do so. Yeah, not, again, pressure. Pressure up front. Yep. Um, they had to get rid of it a little bit quicker than what he wanted to. And it was a good-looking ball. It was just overthrown. Yeah, uh, tough there. They had the safety bearing down on the receiver there. Uh, so uh, they're able to get pressure with four. Uh, it's tough to throw in uh, into that set, into that two-deep look. Punt team back out on the field. Paul Rodriguez back to punt the ball for KCU. Back deep to return for Georgetown. Dylan Warren punts in the air. This one. Not not as uh, not as long of a punt, but a high punt nonetheless. It goes out of bounds on the KCU sideline inside the KCU 45, right about the 43-yard line. So that's where the uh, Georgetown offense will take over. Yeah, for the third possession in a row, the yep. KCU Knights defense is going to start with Georgetown being in four-down territory. And uh, it's tough to get anybody stopped like this. Um, so first downs are hard to come by for KCU right now, but the defense uh, has got a rare uh, kind of bow there back here and hopefully get a stop. Sure. And uh, the ball's been down on that end, end of the field the whole game so far. We're at 6.46 to go in the first, 7-0. to zero. Your score, Georgetown leads Kentucky Christian University. Georgetown offense on the field, two by two set, shotgun, and we've got motion from the wing back from right to left. And it's a fake handoff. And Hartz looks downfield to the to his left on a out route. It's caught by number 11, Josh Gary, and he's off to the races for a touchdown. Coach, a 43-yard touchdown, and that makes it right now 13 to zero. So they uh, they sprint the smash right there, a little a little route combination that most everybody calls a smash route. You get a a little hitch uh, route from the underneath receiver and a corner route from the inside receiver. Uh, he uh, takes the hitch route, and uh, uh, Gary does the rest, able to make the corner miss That's down right. the sideline. And uh, one play, another six points. Absolutely. So the PAT team out uh, to tack on another one or attempt to, that is, left-footed kicker. Uh, kicks it through the uprights. That's uh, Chris Klein. 
A left-footed kicker. That's not something you see a whole lot, I guess, but a great-looking PAT there from him. Yeah, nice job by the holder. Holders don't always like those left-footed kickers. It's a little different for them. And, but, and uh, holders are oftentimes a, an underappreciated uh, <laughs> position, too. I, that's I always, very much, yeah. You remember Tyler Blevins played at Boyd County? He was a, he was a holder, a placeholder, and he always said that placeholders were the most underappreciated position mm -hmm. because – if the if the if the field goes no good, who's the kicker blame? Yeah, no. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, fourteen to zero, you score six thirty-five to go here in the first, and the KCU offense going to get another crack at it. Yeah, we can bring that kind of bring that full that holder story back full circle to KCU here as a kid at, at where I coached at uh, Spring Valley High School named uh, Grayson Malashevich, who is the holder at WVU right now. His brother Trey, uh -huh. a four-year player here in the secondary for KCU. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You've coached a lot of people in your years, Coach. How many years? 15? 30. I'm th kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be nice there. Oh, thanks. 31, right? 31 years. Yes, yep. sir. And we're ready to rock and roll here as Georgetown kicks off. That's Raider kicking it downfield. It drops about the 20-yard line. And it's going to roll into the end zone, but we've got a flag. Yeah, I think that ball hit out of bounds. I, first. I, it had to. It yeah. bounced back I see in, a though. Flag over there. Yeah. And so uh, we'll see. Uh, now, KCU will have her choice here uh, of what to do with a re kick, or they can uh, also take that ball uh, at the 35 yard line. We'll see what they choose to do. What do you choose here, Coach? Uh, I'm probably just going to get my offense out there and take that ball in the 35. 35 is a pretty good field position. Yeah. 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 And that's what they elect to do, Coach Russell and his squad. The ball's going to be on the left hash. We've got uh, KCU, looks like the starting offense back out there. Two receivers to the right of quarterback Kajika Sarvis. Two by two set. And they're going to move the ball over to the right hash. So over toward the Georgetown sideline. So the long side, the big side of the field is over here toward the press box and the uh, – KCU sideline, they're moving right to left on your radio dial. And here we go, uh, Kajika Sarvis directing a little traffic there, getting his guys lined up as the players look over toward the sideline, getting their signal. And here we go, two by two set, running back offset to the left of Sarvis. Looks like in that running back is, I believe that's Williams. We've got jet motion from the slot receiver from left, right to left, and we've got a false start as well, Coach. Yeah, that's not what KCU needed there to put themselves behind the chains. So they go with the, the uh, back and the pistol uh -huh. and uh, look like they had maybe an inside zone play there called, but uh, somebody uh, flinched up front, and so cost them five. It's going to be first and 15, and KCU does not need to be behind the chains. Uh, that's going to turn this uh, very good, uh, uh, very good defensive line for Georgetown loose right here. Uh, the athleticism between the offensive and defensive lines here is kind of uh, is what's standing out early right here. First down, 15 yards, same formation, two by two set, running back offset to the left of Sarvis, jet motion to the left, and we're going to have a keep. It was a, yeah, I think that was a designed, uh, uh, it was an option play there. He decided to keep the ball and he got five yards out of the deal. Yeah, a little read play there, kind of using the quarterback's legs, trying to even up the numbers there and uh, give the offense an advantage. And uh, he does a nice, makes a nice read right there and gets those five yards back. But unfortunately, instead of second and five, second and ten. There you go. That, 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 that's what those costly little mistakes and penalties will do. Yeah, I mean, it's early. You know, it's, it's early. You're going to have some of that. You just know you are. Again, uh, first game, getting things worked out. It's the first time the lights have been on, the fans in the stands, and you don't get any scrimmage games like you do in high school. So uh, it, it's sometimes difficult to get those things worked out. That's right. Two, uh, two receivers to the right. We've got motion out of the backfield to the right, but a handoff to the running back who's on the right-hand side of Sarvis up the middle, and he's going to get – Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it, Coach. That was Jalen Williams on the carry there. Yeah, Williams on the carry. Got Jacob. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Gerald Daniels. We had a number. They had a number change there. That's Gerald Daniels. Gotcha. That's the, that same power play that we saw earlier. And again, uh, our, our guy uh, DJ White makes a, a nice play there on, again, defeating the trap block. And so now Georgetown brings in their pass rush package third down and long. They, and interestingly, Georgetown stands all four defensive linemen up to give them a good pass rush. And Sarvis drops back under pressure. He, uh, kind of a, he sprints out and gives kind of a shovel pass over there uh, toward 
uh, intended receiver. Uh, I believe that's Daniels again over there, Coach. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, not able to catch it. He was under heavy pressure anyway. Yeah. Two, two guys there, Lawson Vaughn and D.J. White, able to put the pressure on from Georgetown. And when those guys know, when they get in a passing situation, those all four of those guys are standing up in there. Uh, it's very hard to block those guys, hard to give Sarvis much uh, time to push the ball down the field. Did a good job of scrambling, just wasn't able to complete it there in the flat. A punt on fourth down and 10 yards, and he gets, gets more of this one. Crosses the Georgetown 40-yard line and goes out of bounds right about the 38 or 39-yard line. No, right about the 40, right on the 40, we'll say. And that's where it'll be first and 10, Georgetown, with 4.59 to go here in the first. They lead 14-0 to zero over Kentucky Christian University. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, KCU does not have a first down yet. No, sir. Uh, so this defense is on the field a ton. I'm not sure how many plays – uh, Georgetown has, uh, has run off offensively, but uh, they're starting to pile them up, starting to pile up the yards here. Still got five minutes to go uh, in this quarter. Uh, so the KCU defense back out here, and they got to be able to slow them down here a little bit. That's right. First down and 10 yards, two running, running backs, one on each side of the quarterback. Uh, motion out of the backfield, and it's, it's one, another intended uh, uh, swing pass, but a great job there by – Cameron Arthur getting back in the backfield and just batting that one down. Yeah, we were talking about his athleticism yes, earlier. They yes. got him uh, walked up there uh, uh, on the line of scrimmage. Uh, he does a nice job of getting his hands up and uh, basically like a block shot in basketball right there, able to knock that thing down. That's right. Yeah, he timed it up just right, too. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're going to have trips to the left this time. One receiver to the right, running back to the right of Hearts, and we've got another offsides play here, so a free play on this one. And he throws it downfield, tries to get it in the hands of Dylan Warren. No go there, but we've got a flag. Yeah. I did see the flag that time. <laughs> yeah, Warren and, uh, was going against um, Latavius Johnson there from uh, KCU, just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Uh, he knew he had the uh, had the uh, encroachment penalty, the offsides penalty there on KCU, and just right. kind of threw it up, one-on-one -on -one situation, and uh, tried to make something happen. But uh, they pick up the free five, still second down. Second down and five, though, instead of ten. Yep from right about the 45-yard line of Georgetown. Here we go. Two receivers to the right and a wing back to the right as well. One wide out to the left and out of the gun. We're going to have a handoff up the middle, find some room, gains a yard or two there, does Darius Neal. Not enough for the first down, so it's going to be third down, about two yards to go. Yeah, Bruce Humphreys right there, senior linebacker from uh, KCU, step, steps up in there and makes the play, holds him to a couple of yards. One of the few running plays we've seen here from yeah. Georgetown. I and mean, they put a lot of pressure on you defensively. That's right. You know, in and out their substitutions. Uh, they, they use a lot of different personnel groupings, a lot of different formations, and they do it all in a no-huddle package, and they're pretty quick about it. Um, so it's a, it's a very stressful situation for KCU's defense. Yes, sir. We've got a – Two receivers to the left, none to the right. We do have a wing back to the right. And it looks like another hard count attempted there from Georgetown. Nothing going there. Good job by the defense sticking in. And we've got a timeout Georgetown here on third down and two yards to go. So interestingly enough there, KCU came out in a, what we call a zero coverage look there. They had, uh, they had everybody walked up, show them blitz man-to-man -man with no help in the middle of the field there. I think that's what Georgetown was looking at. I thought they might change the play and try to try to get some sort of uh, yeah. uh, rub route, some sort of pick and spring somebody free there. On that's the, what I was thinking. Yeah, So, uh, but they, they take the time out. They want to make sure they get a first down here and keep this thing moving. Yes, sir. I believe that was their first time out, so they've got two left in this half. And uh, if I'm Coach Oliver, if, well, I'll, I'll ask you, if you're Coach Oliver here, what are you telling your team? Well, they're just going to try to come come out come out and have the best play possible for for their they practice. I'm sure they've practiced their third down uh, situations. They know what they want to do. I wouldn't Absolutely. be surprised if they they come up and maybe give a, a, a count and take a look at the uh, at what um, KCU has on defense and they'll maybe try to change the play if they need to. See what kind of personnel they come out with. That's right. And here we go. Both teams making their way back out. We've got. Uh, one running back in the backfield to the right of Hartz. Stack. We've got a stack, two stack receivers wide out here on the right and a tight end to the left. And it's going to be a handoff to the left. And he's hitting the backfield, able to bounce off. And he's actually moving backwards across the, across the 50, which gets him a first down. 
yeah, kind of surprised there that they went with the run play. Um, uh, but uh, Casey, you actually got some penetration there and had a chance to play and make a play in the backfield. But a nice hard run there. Uh, yeah, Darius Neal. Darius Neal uh-huh. able, able to uh, uh, get some penetration, but they're able to get the first down. He got those yards after contact. That's mm-hmm. the main thing. Two receivers to the right, tied into the right, and he looks downfield, almost picked off there. Uh, ball off the mark. It was intended, though, for Dylan Warren. And, Coach, that's a, a name we've said a few times. Uh, Shedrick Smith almost made the, made the interception. There. Yeah, he had, uh, he had a chance. It would have been a tough play. Ball was a little bit behind the receiver there, a little inaccuracy for the first time from Hart. Hit, um, um, <clears throat> hit Smith right in the chest, but he wasn't able to make the play. Nope. Trips to the right and ooh, almost jumped off sides there. I believe almost a false start, too. Yeah, I thought we had a false mm. start on a receiver out there. I from did, too, a and a couple of, uh, defensive linemen almost. Yeah. Nonetheless, no flags, and here we go. Second down, 10 yards to go. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left, and we've got another pass. This one comes out of the backfield, and it's off the hands of Darius Neal. Yeah. And, and if he would have caught that, there was some room to run. He did a nice little screen play set up there from Georgetown. Uh, Neal had a chance there to pick up some yards, which I think started to take off with it. Maybe uh, took yep. his eye off of it uh, yep. before uh, – got to secure the catch before you can get the yards. That's what I was getting ready to say. He was trying to make the play before he had the ball. Here we go. Third down, 10 yards to go. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Wing back to the left of uh, quarterback uh, – Drew Hartz, and here we go. He's going to step back, look to his left, and fire it downfield. He finds a receiver right about the 40-yard line, and it's going to be just enough, I believe, for a first down. Josh Gary on the reception, and the chains are moving. Really, for the first time, KCU got a little pressure, but Hartz, again, steps up in the pocket very nice, delivered the ball, and Gary really climbed the ladder right there to bring that down. That ball was a little above his head, went up and made a nice secure catch. Absolutely. Here we go, first down and 10 yards from about the 39-yard line of KCU. It's going to be a little shovel pass or a little toss to the right-hand side out of the gun. Uh, Ball in the hands of Isaiah Cobb. He gets all the the way over to the sideline, and he's brought down. Uh, Clock's still going, so he wasn't out of bounds, but he he was trying to stretch that thing and get the edge, just not able to do so. Good job by the defense here. Yeah, very nice job by Shedrick Smith right there to come up from his corner position and make the play on the toss sweep. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Looks like we got a tight end on the left as well. And the running back offset to the right of Hartz. That is Isaiah Cobb. I was uh, sorry, I zoned out there. They stopped and they were all. Anyway, handoff to the left hand side. It goes to Cobb. And he. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he's brought down. I tell you what, a great second effort there from a KCU defender. Who is that, Coach? That's uh, Derek Williams. Derek Williams, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Derek Williams with a nice play, uh, able to hold on to him there. I'm telling you. Yeah. And if he he made contact, and he, he bounced off, kind of went to the ground, but he held on. If he wouldn't have done that, that would have been a whole lot more yards yeah. for Georgetown. Two receivers to the right, one to the left this time for Georgetown, and a wing back to the left, running back offset to the right as Hartz takes the snap, drops back, looks to his left, finds an open receiver, Josh Gary, out in the flats, and that's a gain of around 13 yards, Coach, and that'll be enough for a first down Georgetown. Yeah, cover three there from uh, – from, uh or, or, or man free, I'm not sure which there from KCU, uh, but the corner there over on the right, giving way too much cushion. Um, very nice, uh, what we call a stick route down just, be, just beyond the first down marker there. Uh, sets down, ball delivered on time, easy first down. Yes, sir. Motion to the right from the slot receiver, and it's going to be a handoff up the middle. Uh, they they kind of set that one up. They were faking that shovel pass or that little swing pass out of the backfield. But uh, handoff goes up the middle, I think, in the hands of Cobb again. Nope. We've got another uh, running back back here. That's Darius, Darius Neal. Neal. Yes, sir. There's the shovel pass. This one goes to the receiver. This one goes to Simon Sharp on the right-hand side. It's going to be a gain, but not enough for a first down. A gain of about three yards. That'll make it third down to two. Very nice job there by the defensive end from KCU, Cameron Dunklin, to, to uh, retrace his steps there, that kind of a wide receiver screen there. Yeah. And uh, he's able to pursue down the line and make a, make a nice play as that ball was coming back to the middle of the field. Two receivers to the left, 
And a tight end to the right wing back to the left of uh, quarterback Hartz as he hands the ball off up the middle. And a big hole there for running back Darius Neal. He's going to have way more than enough for the first down. He gets the ball down inside the two-yard line. Yeah, they do a good job of kind of spreading the KCU defense out and that big, strong offensive line from Georgetown kind of getting a little push there and able to kind of control the defensive front there. And then when, when uh, uh, Darius Neal's got the ball, man, he is a, a nice runner. When he turns the Jets on, he goes. He does. Just a sophomore, 5'11", 195 pounds. And, and uh, when he gets his shoulders square, he's, he can run. Two receivers to the right. A tight end left and a wing back to the right. Handoff, nope, fake handoff. The quarterback's going to keep it this time, Coach. He tries to head over to the right-hand side, find some room, but he's hit hard, um, well, well shy of the end zone. And actually, we've got a new quarterback in there. That's Gary Sluniker. Yeah, I think uh, I think they're trying to go with a little uh, – Wildcat kind of wild package cat, yep. or wild tiger package there uh -huh. down on the goal line. Uh -huh. Try to even out uh, the, the defensive numbers. Uh, but uh, the little zone replay, if he'd have handed that ball off to uh, Darius Neal there, he might have walked in. Yeah. But uh, yep. he kept it himself and um, up in there. Uh, and there was room there. Uh, yeah. He was running off tackle. There was room there, but it closed down very closed quick. Very quick. Yep. yep. And we've got a tie, uh, timeout Georgetown with 10.3 seconds to go here in the first. Yeah. So, and also, we had uh, on the play there, we had uh, an illegal uh, uh, contact there, uh, a targeting, not, not a targeting call, but an unsportsmanlike, and that's going to give uh, Georgetown a first down here okay. inside the one. I missed that, Coach. Yeah. So, it was against KCU. That's correct. Okay. So, it'll be first and goal from the one for KCU. And it looks like clock is going to run. And that's going to do it here for the first quarter from Grayson, Kentucky. Your score uh, at the end of one, Georgetown 14, KCU 0. Back after this for quarter number two here on the Cool Hit Sports Network. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. Back in Grayson here for quarter number two, Chauncey Griffith along with Brent Terry. And uh, it's been offensively anyway, it's been all Georgetown. Yeah, Georgetown has uh, been certainly been in control of the game from the kick. Uh, they they are, are uh, got 14 points already up on the board. Uh, they got 27 plays for 144 yards compared to KCU's nine plays for zero yards. So it's been certainly been one-sided. Uh, Darius Neal, a leading rusher right now, a, uh, a product of Frederick Douglass High School down in Lexington, and uh, he's the leading rusher right now. He's got four carries for 24 yards. And, Kate, and uh, excuse me, Georgetown is knocking on the door once again. I always root for Frederick Douglass. Our man, Nathan McPeak. Yes, sir. Head coach, one of the better programs in the state of Kentucky. And that, folks, is a touchdown. Georgetown, a uh, handoff up the middle, goes to Cobb, and he marches his way in. That's going to make it 20-0 to zero right now. Yep. Uh, Georgetown over Kentucky Christian University. Isaiah Cobb, another really good-looking uh, junior there from Georgetown, six foot two, 215 pounds, spent some time at – Tennessee Chattanooga, so a transfer up. Uh, he's from uh, Tennessee and uh, originally signed with the Mocs, but transferred to Georgetown and um, a very good-looking player. Yeah, no question about that one, Coach. As Georgetown tacks one more on there, Chris Klein with the PAT, left-footed kicker, and that makes it 21-0 here 
with 14.57 to go before half. Yeah, the story of the game so far is just simply KCU uh, not able to get anything going uh, offensively. Uh, they got to find a way to move the ball just a little bit and keep give this defense a break. Um, you know, 21 points uh, here so far early, you know, 14 in the first, then a quick score here in the second quarter. Yep. You know, just if you looked at it, if you're just tuning in, you'd think, you know, that the KCU defense is, is, is not playing very well. And, and, you know, two of those drives started in their own territory. They scored once on fourth down. They had a big a third down, third and long conversion uh, in there to keep things going. So, you know, not all bad for the KCU defense. No. Uh, as crazy as that might sound. Uh, right now. Uh, They've the been KCU, on the field a lot, the Coach. The KCU <laughs> offense has got to get something going to protect their defense a little bit. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to cut you off there. but that No problem. You made a great point there. That, that It's not been all negative for the KCU defense. Absolutely not. As Georgetown comes out ready to uh, kick off here to start things off in the second quarter for the KCU offense, back deep to receive a return, I should say, uh, Devontae Williams. And he's going to be catching the football, the other uh, returner there, DT Gideon, as Williams with a decent return gets it across the 25-yard line there. Uh, to about the 28-29 yard line. So it, it, not a bad return there, all things considered. That was a pretty good kick. Yeah, pretty nice kick, good return. At the end there, Brandon Martin, number 30 from Georgetown, freshman, comes down and, and uh, made a really nice hard hit, wrapped him up, got him on the ground. Nice play there by a uh, young guy from uh, Georgetown. Absolutely. As the KCU offense makes their way out, looking to get things going here. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Looks like we've got a wing back to the left as well. Running back is going to be directly behind quarterback Kajaka Sarvis as the motion from the wing goes left to right. Fake handoff as Sarvis drops back and he airs it out downfield and finds a receiver and we've got a flag as well. Still on his feet after contact is uh, Rucker Daly. And that's a big first down for the KCU Knights, Coach. Yeah, so the, the penalty is going to be pass interference on the defense. Uh, uh, the DB there was tugging on uh, on his shirt as he went by. KCU obviously going to decline that. Sarvis with the, the big throw off his back foot. A lot of pressure in his face. Kind of put it up there and uh, hauled it in for a nice game. 51-yard cover there, and that's uh, that finally gets them into Georgetown territory and see if we – the Knights can get something on the board. Yeah, I tell you, we, we talked about the ball staying on that end of the field. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course, we flipped here for the second quarter, so here we go. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, wing back to the right. Snap goes to Sarvis. He hands it off this time off the left tackle, off tackle on the left side to Devontae Williams for a gain of about six yards. Yeah, nice hard run by Devontae right there. Kind of gets the edge, gets his shoulders square, and, and gets a, a good first down gain. And, and finally, KCU's cooking a little bit here. Williams rushed for two yards in the first quarter. So yep. that, that, getting things going here. That's right. Two by two set here with uh, Sarvis at quarterback, running back offset to his right. That's going to be uh, Devontae Williams. And looks like we had some movement up front. I do see a flag, so a free play here and almost a touchdown there. Uh, not able to haul it in, though. Yeah, once again, Sarvis does a good job with the hard count, gets, uh, gets, Kate, gets uh, Georgetown into the neutral zone. That allows him to take a shot down the field. He knew he had a free play. That's, that's pretty headsy right there out of him, yeah. knowing uh, that he's got the free play, tries to push the ball down the field. Didn't connect, but had a shot right there. Uh, that gives the, the uh, offsides penalty, though, on Georgetown. We'll give him the first down. Yeah, that five-yard penalty gives, is enough for a first down here. Yep, that's what a positive run there on first down, getting it down to you know second and four. Now you get uh, you get the offsides and you get another first down. That's right, coach. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, wing back to the right, running back directly behind quarterback Sarvis, and motion from the wing back from right to left. Here we go. Fake handoff and a sprint out pass, or a, not a sprint out pass, but a short pass there to over on the right hand side. It goes to Brandon Long. And that's almost enough for first down. About a nine-yard gain there. Yeah, first time we've seen the little play action. Uh, yeah. He slipped the H back uh, out into the flat. He's been in there for blocking port, uh, purposes most of the time, uh, Brandon has, but uh, got his first catch out in the right flat. Did a nice job after the catch. Second down, one yard to go. 
From the 13-yard line, KCU looking, knocking on the door of the end zone. Intended pass outside to the right. It's going to go to Rucker Daly, but he's unable to haul it in there. I think he might have heard some footsteps. A little contact made as he touched the ball and uh, not able to haul it in. Now, Kyron Simpson made a nice play from his cornerback spot there. He's a senior. He's seen that route a bunch. You know, Kyron 5'9", 170 pounds, and he played that. You know, you get a little tighter coverage when you get in the red zone right here. Everything reduces down, uh, makes it uh, a little harder to complete those short outs. Third and one from the 13. Uh, this time around two by two set as Sarvis calls a receiver in jet motion and then hands it off to the running back. And the running back tries to go off tackle to the right. Nothing there, tries to bounce it back in and nothing doing, but I do see a flag after the play, Coach. It yeah. came from the KCU backfield. Yeah, late flag there by the by the white hat. I'm not sure what he's got here. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Dead ball, personal foul on the Tigers. That's a big-time penalty for the Kentucky Christian University Knights here, Coach. That's a that's a first down. Yeah, it keeps them out of a, a, keeps them out of a, a third down situation right there. Gives them the first. Wasn't sure exactly what the penalty there was. I know we had the, the dead ball penalty. I didn't see what happened, but KCU will definitely take it, and that moves it inside the 10, inside the 5, just short of the 5. Yes, sir. About the 7-yard line, I believe. Two-by-two two set. Uh, Sarvis from the gun. He takes the snap hands to the running back who tries to bounce it out to the right side, and he's gobbled up right about the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of about one. Boy, D.J. White <laughs> yeah. wrapped him up right there, the big man, the uh, big defensive end there on the left side, and he is a handful. Uh, he's probably got uh, five, six tackles already tonight. Uh, he's done an outstanding job. Williams listed at 5'7", 168. Yeah, D.J., 6'4", 250. There you go. A little bit of difference, Coach. Yeah, yeah. Not able to slide under him there. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Trips to the left, one receiver out wide to the right as Sarvis, the man calling the shots here offensively on the field, takes the snap, looks to his right. Another screen play there, intended this time for Devontae Williams and nothing going. Yeah, they try to slip Devontae out, uh, out of the backfield into the flat. Well played there yeah. uh, by both the safety and the corner from, uh, from Georgetown there. It's gonna make it third down in seven yards to go from the seven yard line. So third down and goal, I should say, from the seven. As the offense looks to Coach Jake Russell to uh, to get some, get a play call here, Coach. Now they've slowed the tempo just a little bit uh -huh. on third down to make sure they get the play they want. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right, running back offset to the right of Sarvis. Georgetown stays with their, their regular personnel on defense. Hand off out of the backfield it goes. He bounces off one. One would-be tackler and makes his way after cutting back inside into the end zone. Touchdown, Kentucky Christian University. Devontae Williams with the carry. Devontae with a great individual effort right there. He runs through the arm tackle of Lawson Vaughn, the, the right defensive end from Georgetown. Cuts it back. They got the flow all going. He cuts it back against the grain and sticks it in the end zone. That's a really nice run, a great individual effort because uh, there was definitely some contact in the backfield. Yeah. And he got his shoulder square and turned that thing into six points. And that's what I like about the guy. He might be undersized, but he's not outworked. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No fear to turn that thing back across the grain right there. Had a nose for the end zone. KCU with the muddle huddle. As and uh, yeah, they muddled themselves into a delay <laughs> game. That's what I was going to say, as we see the delay of game penalty. That's one of those early season. Everybody's excited. First touchdown. Uh -huh. um, you see this in high school sometimes. Somebody forgets to go out for the extra point team, so they had to wait on uh, on a young man there that uh, I'm not going to call out. Right. Uh, but right. Uh, uh, but he uh, knows who he is. That's though. right. Yeah. They had to wait on him. They end up taking the delay, but um, should still be able to get this in. Yes, sir. PAT attempt from Paul Rodriguez is good. That makes it 21 to seven here. Georgetown still on top on the scoreboard, but KCU uh, finally gets some points on the board, Coach, with 12.04 here to go before half. Yeah, some signs of life from the KCU offense right there. That's just what they needed. That will rejuvenate that KCU defense a little bit. They'll be able to, to kind of, uh, they were able to get a break over here on the sidelines, get some water, make some adjustments maybe, get some things talked about. And uh, the first time that they didn't have to go right back out on the field after a three and out, 
you know, that, that first play there, the 51-yard pass uh, from Sarvis gets things started. They're able to get the convert, get the touchdown on the nice run by Williams and uh, get it back to a 14-point game. And uh, so maybe we got something brewing here in Grayson. Hey, that's right. And you made a great point there. Not that all your points aren't great, Coach, but uh, one that I that resonated with me anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take the money later. Um, the KCU defense we talked about, they've been on the field for the majority of the first quarter. Not only did seven points on the board, not only is that a good thing just in general on the scoreboard, it's a good thing getting the offense rolling, but it also gives a big break to that defense, a well-needed break yeah, to that defense. Absolutely. You know, nine plays in the first quarter from the offense, that's all they had. Um, and I would, um, so <clears throat> they were able to put more than that, more than those plays together already here in the uh, in the second quarter. You know, the time of possession there was 10 minutes. Uh, Georgetown had the ball for 10 minutes and 19 seconds compared to 4:41 for for KCU in the first quarter. So um, that's uh, it's good that KCU is able to get it in. Like I said, some signs of life, and so see if we can get a, a, a good defensive possession. Absolutely, as Paul Rodriguez out to do the kickoff duties as well. And he sends one deep. It's inside the 20, caught at about the 15-yard line. And it's caught by Dylan Warren. He brings it back inside. Now he caught it on the left, now all the way back out to the right hash. And a big return there, about a 25-yard re uh, kickoff return. Yeah, very nice. Dylan Warren kind of making some uh, – got in behind the wedge there, kicked it out to the right, got the ball up past the 40, and a nice uh, kickoff return for Georgetown. Yes, sir. First down and 10. It will be for Georgetown after Kentucky Christian University uh, got seven points on the board. But, hey, their defense got a little break here, and, I, and I'm excited. To, I'm anxious, I guess, to see see how this series goes. Yep. Two receivers left, one to the right, running back offset to the right of Hartz as he looks to his sideline now back going through his cadence. And here we go, handoff up the middle. And a good move there by Cobb, kind of a juke move, letting the, letting the hole develop, and it's a first down. Yeah, very nice run again from uh, uh, from Neil, Darius Neal right there. He found a nice uh, seam there on the left side, and Georgetown right back on the ball where they put the pressure on you with this tempo offense. Yes, sir. I said Cobb. That was Neil, Coach. Uh, long pass down the field, and it's in, uh, nope, almost intercepted. I jumped the gun there, and so did everybody else in this stadium. Thought it was intercepted, but just off the hands of the of the of the the cornerback there, but uh, almost a big big play there for KCU defensively. Yeah, that's Latavius Johnson over there playing corner, and he's locked up one on one there on uh, number five uh, Dylan Warren, uh, kind of a 50-50 ball. They they, they fake the inside zone to Daniel, puts it up. And a very nice job in coverage. Had his hands on that ball, just wasn't able to reel it in. That's a great play. That's a great defensive uh, play there from uh, Latavius. Absolutely. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Motion in the backfield from left to right goes uh, Neal. And it's going to be a handoff to him up the middle. He tries to bounce it out to the right side. He's going to get a couple yards, but that's about it. Good job there by the KCU defense, that linebacking core you've mentioned. And uh, – there was a lot of room on out there, on out toward the hash and on out toward the sideline. But the, the yeah, Kent, I think it was Kent. Is yeah. that right, Coach? Yeah, Ryan Kent there came off the edge uh, and forced that ball back into the middle uh, where uh, the linebacking core was able to kind of eat that up. They did a good job. They kind of brought a little stunt. Uh, from uh, from the boundary there, and, and uh, he forced that ball back up into the middle. And you could probably hear through our microphones. There's some signs of life here in the in the stadium here, as the, the a good crowd on hand here for game number one. The student section over there getting pumped up. Although we do have a player down on the field, not sure what's going on there. I can't see a number either, Coach. Can you, I, I don't know if you can see. I do not know that appears to be one of the uh, Georgetown offensive linemen. Right. Although I cannot get a number right now, but uh, he does seem again. I want to speculate on these things, but he does seem to be in um, quite a bit of pain down there. Yeah, yeah. So thoughts and prayers definitely go out to that that uh, young man as uh, the training staff for Georgetown helping him up off the field. It's definitely an offensive lineman because uh, it took about four guys to lift him up. Uh, that would be number 73. That's Owen Stinnett. So thoughts and prayers to him as they're, they're actually carrying him off the field, Coach. He's not yeah. putting any weight on that leg. So Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Not yeah. at all. Tanetta, he's a junior. He's been around a while, six foot four, two hundred and seventy pounds. Um, you know, and that Georgetown offensive line has given uh, their quarterback plenty of time tonight. Yeah. And um, you know, we'll see whether this uh, uh, has any effect on uh, on Georgetown. Third down at about 
a long seven yards. Scoreboard says eight. I'm going to say third down and seven yards to go here. And you hear the atmosphere uh, on third down here in the K in, in KCU Stadium. Got to love it, man. College football. Yeah, it's exciting. Yes, sir. Two by two set for Georgetown as quarterback looks toward the sideline. And we're almost ready to resume action here as the ball is spotted and the whistle blows, and here we go. Looks like a four-man pressure here on third down. Quarterback steps back, now back up into the pocket. A little bit of pressure there from the KCU defense, and that's going to be a, a big-time tackle for a loss. A quarterback sack there by the KCU defense, and, and Coach, yeah. They're rocking and rolling. Yeah, so they, they showed a four-man pressure, and then uh, they uh, they did a great job of disguising it. Uh, they stayed in their, their normal alignment, and then as the ball was snapped, both inside linebackers yep, yep. Uh, blitzed uh, in the A-gap. That's some pressure that uh, they have not been able to get uh, earlier in this game, and so they get a big three and out. And yes, sir. Punt with a nice blitz there from uh, from the KCU defense. It's going to be fourth down and 17 yards to go. Ball is on the Georgetown 43-yard line, and the punt team's on the field. Back deep to return for KCU. I can't get a number there, and I'll, I'll tell you as soon as I can. That's it. That is Richmond Sims, a great punt return. He's showing us that right now. About a, he's, still up, he's still on his feet. Okay. Coach, he's not going down. What well, a guy. Yeah, they, he's fighting for every yard he can get there. They should give him forward progress out to about the 20-yard line, I would think. What about a seven-yard return there? Yeah. Contact made after about three, yeah, something we'll, like that. We'll see where they give him forward progress to. Uh, looks like they're spotting the ball, Coach, right about the 20. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. Richmond Sims, I, I had the pleasure last year. I met his uh, mom and dad. Mm. They were here and uh, very nice people. But Richmond, is a, he's a quality quality character, which is – which is uh, a lot of the KCU players are, I will say that. Trips to the left, one to the right for Kajaka Sarvis behind the center. He's in the gun, running back offset to his left. It's going to be a pass, a shovel pass right in the middle of the field, and he bounces it out, does Desmond Daly, and he, got a, he ran for about 30 yards there, but it was only about, what, a six-yard gain, something like that, Coach? Yeah. He not. caught it in the middle of the field and went backwards and – and got what he could. Yeah, very nice little play call there, trying to slow down. That's a play that uh, uh, they'll use. Um, coach will use to uh, slow down the pass rush from Georgetown right there. Yes, sir. Uh, he kind of sets up in the pocket to get in a rush, and they flip it underneath to the running back, a little shovel pass. Yep. Made a nice run out of it. They get a nice gain. It puts them in a in a good second and four situation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Two backs in the backfield, one on each side of Sarvis. As he takes the snap, hands it off. Nope, fakes the handoff, steps back, sprints out. Ball almost picked off. He tried to get it across the middle of the field to, it looks like, Michael Henry was the intended receiver, I believe, Coach. Yeah, it looked and, like. Yeah, 21. Yeah, it looked like, uh, looked like uh, Henry there. This ball broken up. They did a nice job with the play fake. Uh, Sarvis had some time, had a little bit of open vision out there on the edge, but uh, uh, wasn't able to. Uh, pretty good coverage there from uh, Georgetown. That's Gaither. That's 81, not 21, Coach. I want to give credit where credit's due. Sometimes these, these red numbers on the black jersey is kind of hard to see uh, depending on the lighting. You know the what I mean? The KCU numbers are very difficult to see. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left, running back offset to the right of Sarvis. And it's going to be another fake handoff and another check down pass. This one goes to Richmond Sims. And it's going to be not quite enough for a first down gain of only about one yard. So it looks like we're going to have fourth down and about two yards to go from the 28, 29 yard line. Yeah, well played there by Georgetown. Sims able to, to try to just make a little something out of nothing there. He was able to get the ball in the flat, but, but uh, they turned him back into the defense and uh, just wasn't able to pick up the first down. That's right. As Rodriguez back on to the field, Rodriguez a uh, Senior kicker for KCU, listed at five foot eight, two hundred and forty pounds. Look, not a conventional looking kicker, but I tell you what, he can boot the ball. And here we go, gets one up into the air. It's going to drop about the thirty-eight yard line and roll out of bounds, and that's where Georgetown will take over. Uh, the back deep to return there was Dylan Warren, and he just let the ball hit and roll out of bounds. Yeah, it would have been a tough catch. Probably sure. made a good decision there, Absolutely. just to let it go. 
Uh, but uh, good job uh, from uh, from the punter there, Rodriguez, pinning that ball between the numbers and the sidelines, and uh, no return. So all net there on the kick, and uh, so Georgetown uh, coming back out on offense. KCU with another chance here defensively to rise up. 8:48 to go before the half. The score right now: Georgetown 21, KCU 7. As quarterback. Drew Hartz makes his way out. One running back to his left, trips to his right, and one receiver to the left. He calls the running back in motion. It's going to be another one of those shovel passes, swing passes out of the backfield, and a gain of about, uh, Coach, seven, six, seven yards. Yeah, a nice little wide receiver uh, where you get a situation where you get trips to the field. They sprint the running back out of the backfield. They just flip it out there. It's, it's a screen pass. The receivers do a good job of blocking. It's basically a tall sweep play. Right. It, you know, it basically uh, serves as, as a run in their sure. offense. Sure. Very safe. Uh, it's not a lateral. If he drops the ball, you know, no, no damage. But they get on the perimeter really quickly and good receiver blocking. Uh, it nets them about six yards there, seven yards. Second down, four yards to go. Two receivers right, one left. Or, excuse me, two left, one right. As Hartz drops back, finds a receiver. And it's enough for the first first down there. Looks like that is Quincy Perrin uh, out of the backfield makes that catch and just gets to the sideline yeah. and uh, chains are moving. Yeah, I slip uh, Quincy out of the backfield right there in the right flat. A very accurate throw um, from quarterback Hartz right there and um, they move the chains again. Yes, sir. First and 10 from the Georgetown 49-yard line as they line up on the football. Two, uh, two receivers left, one to the right. We got a wing back to the uh, right as well. Deep back offset to the left. It's going to be a handoff to him, and he's off to the races. Uh, off tackle to the right-hand side. That's Quincy Perrin again, Coach. And yeah. That's enough for a first down, I believe. Yeah. It's going to be close. Five foot ten, 215 pounds, and when he gets his shoulder square, he's a load to bring down. Gain of only about nine there. As it's another handoff to Perrin. This one, he bounces back to the left. He does cross. The 40-yard line, which is more than enough for a first down, goes down about the 41, so a gain of about two yards. Yeah, better job from the interior of the KCU defense there, but not enough to keep him from getting the first down. That's right, and that's what it's all about. First and 10, it will be for Georgetown from the 39-yard line. 7-12 to go, clock running here uh, before the half. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. And here we go. Maybe a blitz look here from KCU. We've got deep motion from the slot receiver from right to left, and a handoff it goes to the right, and he goes way wide right, does Isaiah Cobb. Tries to get the edge, not able to do so. Contact made. He stays on his feet, but he's brought down right about the line of scrimmage over toward the sideline. Yeah, two KCU defenders there with a chance to bring him down and couldn't quite do it. The first one, Brian Hughes, but it slows him down long enough to let the other black shirts uh, pursue the football and, and keep it to a minimal gain. That's right, and that's something I've noticed about this KCU defense. They swarm to the football. They do. They have a nice speed on defense. They're not oversized. Uh, they, they play a lot of quick guys in their unit. Uh, they do a good job of shuffling guys in and out to keep them fresh. They play a lot of single high safety um, and try to get a lot of hats to the ball. Second down, nine yards to go. Empty backfield, trips to the left. Hartz looks to his right, finds a receiver. He makes a move, a great move there for a couple yards there. Able to avoid the contact is initial contact is Frank Aluga. And that's going to be a game of about four yards. A really nice little receiver play, that little receiver screen play where they release uh, the, the uh, guard and tackle on yeah. the right side to get out in front. But an even better play there uh, from uh, the defensive end there from uh, KCU to kind of retrace and make that play from behind. However, Absolutely. he seems to be uh, down on the play out there, and I can't get a number uh, on him, but uh, he made a real nice play of kind of retracing his steps there once he saw it was a screen pass and uh, drug uh, Luka down from behind. Not sure the number there for the – KCU player down though, uh, Coach. Georgetown having more success moving the football on this drive than they did the previous drive on the three and out. Yeah, they kind of got it going again. They're back into rhythm. They get that tempo going and uh, they do a good job of uh, kind of keeping you off balance. They limit your substitutions and uh, 
they do a good job of uh, just kind of mixing up their tempos. Uh, right. they're, they'll be really quick up on the ball, and then the next play the, they're a little slower, and then they're right back up on the ball. kind of keeps you guessing. Sure. That, and, and that's all part of controlling not only the tempo but the pace of the game. Absolutely. That was James Carradine, the down player. He he able to make it off the field on his own accord, so I yeah, was glad to see that. Yeah, I think he had uh, maybe a calf cramp there. But that was a really nice play uh, by him uh, to kind of retrace uh, on that because that had uh, big play written all over it. No question about that. Two uh, trips to the left, one receiver to the right, running back offset to the right of Hearts, and we've got a flag. Uh, it's going to be offsides on KCU. Am I right, Coach? Yeah. Number seven, Kent, again, jump offside. They were a little late getting lined up. And, uh, again, like you're talking about, you got to got to watch the ball. So uh, Hart uh, draw, draws him offsides with the cadence and then takes a shot down the field. Uh, so they're going to get a free five out of it. That will make it a repeat third down, but instead of third and six, it will be third and one from the 30-yard line, I believe. So at third and one, Certainly in uh, two-down territory, so it kind of keeps the playbook open. Uh, they could uh, try to, you know, slam this thing up in here with a zone run or some sort of perimeter run and pick up the first down, or that penalty is going to actually be enough. No kidding. Well, wow. so they we need to get a, a sign here from the official because that was a 15-yard penalty there, something else besides just an offsides. And yeah. it doesn't look like we're going to get a – signal from the official no sir i did the only flag that was thrown though was before the snap of the football and the only thing i might have had there was pass interference down the field that's I, the only thing i can think of i didn't see a flag but but I'm, I'm with you on that one two receivers left one to the right and we've got a tight end to the left as well hart steps back under pressure and he's brought down for about a five yard loss here so a good answer here from the kcu defense yep cameron Dunklin uh -huh. uh, was able to kind of run the hump there uh, on uh, number 70. The offensive tackle from Georgetown made him step up in the interior uh, of that KCU defense, able to come up with a sack. Ball on the 25-yard line of KCU. Second down, 15 yards to go for the Georgetown Tigers as the clock rolling under five minutes. And here we go, two receivers left, one to the right, tied into the left. And we've got motion from the wide out to the left, deep motion. And we've got a handoff back to the right and nothing doing there. It, that's, that's that play. They, they, they go ahead and carry out their fate, Coach, of, of that swing pass or that, the, the, the pass out of the backfield that we talk about. But on this one, it's kind of a, a counter, I guess you would say, off that play. I don't know. Yeah, they, they kind of show like they're going to run the, the uh, receiver screen again or they get the ball, you know, out uh, in the uh, – kind of behind the line of scrimmage and let the receivers block. But this time they, they hand the ball off uh -huh. uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Quincy Perrion, big running back, but not able to pick up much. So it puts them in a long third and long situation here. Third down, 15 yards, trips to the left, one to the right. The running back offset to the right of Hartz as he takes the ball, steps back, looks downfield. Finds an open receiver, but what a play there, Coach, for the KCU secondary. Yeah, that looked like uh, number 31, uh, uh, Akerson, uh -huh. uh, was able to come up with a nice play there. KCU decided to bring the pressure and play man-to-man, -man, and uh, Akerson does a very nice job of being on the hip of the receiver and knocking the ball away, and they're going to force a long field goal attempt here from Georgetown. Yes, sir. I think uh, Michael DeWitt was in there on that one too, Coach. A couple, a couple KCU defenders yeah. in there. So a field goal attempt here um, for the Georgetown Tigers as Chris Klein comes on. The ball's in the air, and it's going to be All right, short. here we go. It's Good. caught in the end zone, though. And a great return there, but not enough. Yeah, something you don't see as that's much. Right, yeah, that's right. You don't see that very much. <laughs> that's why we were kind of speechless just yeah, watching it happen. Yeah, yeah. for the uh, – you don't see that much, uh, that remnants of the kick six there, Auburn, yeah. Alabama, a few years ago yeah. when they returned a field goal for a touchdown to win the game. Um, however, a 42-yard field goal did, uh, they w did was a little bit short. I'm not sure who the return guy was there. I uh, think it might have been 24. Does that sound did, – I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to speculate on that either. Yeah, I'm not sure who the return guy was. Again, the numbers are just very difficult to see for KCU. Uh, but he caught the ball about nine yards deep in the end zone right there. Georgetown uh, did not cover uh, there initially. He was able to get the ball out to about the 40-yard line. However, there was a flag during the play, 
I think that we had maybe one of the uh, uh, a player or a coach actually bump into the official uh, in that um, in that team box down there, so okay. they get a sideline warning. Um, so and, no uh, loss of yards, uh, or is there a loss of yards? We'll see. It yeah. de- depends on how on the infraction, what they actually call yeah, well. sideline interference. I think, and then sideline. Uh, you can get a sideline warning. I think we might have interference, Coach, because they're walking the ball back uh, yep. 15 yards. I never did see a call, though. No. Nonetheless, first down, 10 yards going, and given yeah. the alternative, that's that's big for KCU. Yeah, unfortunately, you lose about 15 yards there on the return. It kind of sets them back, but – Four minutes to try to get something going here. That's right. Great stop by the KCU defense. 3.54 to go. Two by two set. We've got a offsides penalty and a throw downfield. It's going to be caught, folks. It's going to be caught for a first down. We'll wait and see the call, though. From up here, it looked like a catch. They're going to say and no they're catch. They're going to say no catch. That's right. However, we are going to have uh, uh, offsides again on Georgetown sure. in that neutral zone. Uh, that's why Sarvis pushed the ball down the field. Yeah, ball, and it was kind of it was kind of rushed and kind of underthrown. Yep. And a good job there by the receiver coming back and making the grab. He's just not able to make the catch. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Making the grab, just not able to make the catch. Yeah, he. <laughs> it, it was very. It was on the far side of the field there from us. Very difficult to see whether he got his hands under the ball yeah. or not. Uh, but the official was right on top of it. He ended up waving it off. Uh, but, again, a headsy play there from Sarvis pushing the ball down the field when he knows he's got the free play. That's right. First down five yards ago now as we've now got three receivers to the left and one to the right. Running back offset to the right to the short side of the field, and it's going to be a handoff left, and that play blown up from the get-go. And a fumble, and it's picked up by Georgetown, Coach. Yeah. That looked like uh, number 52 from uh, Georgetown right there. Um, we don't have a 52 on our roster. Well, we got a number change right here. It is. It's Warner, right? Oh, yep, Ramarian Warner. That's right. Yep, Ramarian Warner jumps on it. So what we had there was a little uh, a zone read play. Uh, uh, the uh, running back uh, on the sweep, the quarterback tried to pull it uh, for an inside quarterback run, a little ball handling miscue, again, early in the year. Sure. You know, they put it on the ground. Unfortunately, that sends the KCU defense right back out on the field after the stop. That's right. That's right. Here we go. Uh, Georgetown offense out on the field as well. And they, they've got two receivers to the left, one to the right, and a, a little shovel pass over to the right-hand side to Isaiah Cobb, and a big gain for him on first down. About an eight-yard gain there. And that's going to make it second down, two yards to go here for – Gave about seven. So second down, about three yards to go here for Georgetown. Now, Warner, another uh, Frederick Douglass product, um, making an impact in this game tonight for Georgetown. Absolutely. Two receivers left, one to the right, and motion from the wing back from left to right. And here we go. Ball is snapped. It's in the hands of quarterback Greg Sluniker, and he looks to the right hand side, and it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, nice play again. Just having a hard time picking up the number there, the defender from KCU, but he did a great job of breaking on that ball. They tried to to slip uh, number two, uh, Isaiah Cobb, out of the backfield. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a nice close on the ball from uh, one of the linebackers there to uh, knock it down and, again, put Georgetown in a in a third down situation. But, unfortunately, maybe again in, in four down territory kind of uh, after seeing that last uh, field goal attempt. Sloniker hands the ball off up the middle this time, and they're – the running back there is going to fight for a few yards. I believe that's going to be enough for a first down, and it is first down Georgetown. That was Cobb again fighting his way right in the right in the thick of things. Man, I'm telling you, Georgetown has a stable of running backs. I'm telling you. Yeah, they have got some dudes back there in that, in that backfield. And you know what else? It's like their whole backfield is kind, of kind of a rotation. They because do. here's Sloniker, you know, we, this is not the first time we've seen him back there, but he's, he's not the starting quarterback. That's correct. Three receivers left, one to the right. Sloniker in the gun. He looks to his left, fires it downfield into the end zone. And it's caught for a touchdown, Georgetown. That's going to be a touchdown, uh, a 17-yard touchdown pass from Slunniker to Aaron Maggard. Makes the score 27-7.
Yeah, just a nice route, able to uh, caught KCU in a one-on-one -on -one situation there, and a, a really nice uh, throw there from Sloniker to, to hit him uh, in stride for the touchdown. A 17-yarder, that's their second longest one of the night. And Chris Klein back on to try to tack one more onto that lead. And he does. That makes it 28 to 7 here. Uh, George, uh, Georgetown on top of KCU here with about 225 to go before the half, coach. Yeah, that's just uh, the, the fumble there is, is a killer for KCU. Uh, if they got it down to 21 to 7 and have the ball back. Uh, they have a nice return on the on the field goal, you know, which you don't see very often. But to get the penalty pushes them back, and then a fumble on the first play from scrim first or second play from scrimmage, and uh, that ends up uh, giving a really good field position uh, to Georgetown, and they quickly convert and push it to 28 to seven. Um, if KCU could have just held on to the ball there, even if they don't score and you go into halftime 21 to seven, you feel a little better about it. So That's what I was gonna say, going from a, a two score lead to a three score lead, that, that's kind of a big deal mentally at halftime. Absolutely, and uh, this uh, this quarter is not over with. They, KCU's oh no. gonna have to come out here. They need to try to try at least, at the very least, to hang on to this ball until the, uh, until the, end, of the end of the half. Williams and it looks like Gideon back deep to return for KCU here. And on the kick for Georgetown is going to be Drew Raider. 2.25 to go here before the half. And here we go. A high kickoff. It's going to drop right about the five yard line. It's fielded by Williams. He gets it across the 20, across the 30. And he's brought down about the 32-yard line. A great return there from him. And I'll tell you what, he had one guy to beat him. If it wasn't for a shoestring tackle, he was off to the races. Kyron Simpson saves a touchdown right there for <laughs> I'm with the you. Georgetown Tigers. Uh, he did a nice job of kind of bringing that thing back to the middle and then stuck his foot in the ground and got that ball north-south along the numbers there. And, and Kyron Williams just kind of reached out and got him by the by one leg right there or that would have been uh, six points uh, on the kickoff return. Coach, I'm with you. KCU offense back out on the field. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Looks like, uh, no, two by two set, I'm sorry. And running back offset to the right. He motions to the left, though. And quarterback looks to him, looks to him and fires the ball back over the other way. And it's caught for a minimal gain. It's team. caught there by Jamison, sorry. Oh, my fault. Team speed from Georgetown right there. Little wide receiver screen, and man, they get a lot of hats to the, a lot of orange hats getting to the ball right there. Uh, their defensive lineman, uh, DJ White, and on the other side, uh, uh, Lawson Vaughn, yep. are doing a, little, a good job putting pressure on the quarterback, and then that whole secondary run into the ball right there, making a play. And that was Gaither on the catch, not Jameson. That's the second time I've done that. That 31 and 81 look alike. Yeah. Two receivers left, two to the right as well. So same formation, and we've got the same motion. No, we've got motion from right to left, but that's where he stays. Quarterback drops back, looks across the middle. It's caught by Williams for a gain of about four or five, about five yards. It'll make it third down and about eight to go. O-line able to give uh, Sarvis a little bit of time right there. When he gets a little bit of time, uh, he can throw an accurate ball and get, uh, get enough uh, yardage there to uh, – get a uh, kind of still a long third down here, but um, uh, give him a chance hopefully to move the chains. That's right, Coach. Third down at about seven to go, not eight. Third and seven to go for the Knights. Two yes. receivers. No, we've got, we're going to have uh, trips to the left, one receiver to the right. Backfield deep motion from right to left. And now we've got another motion from the number three receiver back across the field as Sarvis looks downfield, and it's caught in the middle of the field. A big catch there by number 27, uh, Jonathan Carter, for a huge game for KCU here with 46 seconds on the clock. Yeah, another back foot throw with pressure bearing down on him, able to kind of throw back into the middle of the field. Um, not much time. they got to get back up on the ball here. We're under 40 to play. First and 10 from the Georgetown 39-yard line, down 35 uh, seconds on the clock. Clock rolling, two by two set, and Sarvis looking to – Make something happen here as he takes the snap, looks to his left, finds a receiver, and he's brought down 
almost to the sideline. Not out of bounds, though. KCU with one timeout left, and they're going to use it here. Yeah, long throw, right hash all the way to outside the numbers, right yeah. close to the boundary on the left side, uh, but hauled in, but not able to you throw that, hoping to catch that and get out of bounds. Sure. A great job from the corner, closing on it, not letting him get out of bounds, forces KCU into uh, their last time out. And you don't, a lot of people, you know, you don't think about that, you know, especially on TV or something like that, or even in the stands. But down on that football field, he's on the right hash and he's throwing the ball. It's only a five-yard gain. But, Coach, that's a long throw. You said that. It's a long throw that's, for a five-yard game. That's right. The ball's in the air a long time right yes, there. Yes, sir. You know, um, about, about a 35-yard throw, something sure. like that. And he put it right on the money. That's right. It was yeah. right there. Yeah. So, a timeout here from KCU with 20.4 seconds to go in this – foot. In the, well, in the first half of this football game anyway. Your score, Georgetown 28, KCU 7. And Coach Russell with his squad out there – trying to figure out a way to get some more points on the board going into the halftime. Yeah, not much time to do it here. They're out of timeouts. Uh, we'll see how Georgetown plays it. I imagine they're going to going to back up here and try to keep everything underneath of them and force some underneath throws. Two by two set, ball on the left hash. And running back offset to the right of Sarvis. He takes the snap, looks downfield under pressure. He sprints out to his left, gets rid of it down the sideline and just kind of threw it away, Coach. Yeah, can't Understandably. take a sack. Understandably. Absolutely, can't yeah. take a sack. You don't have any timeouts. A sack probably going to end the, in the half right there. So he does a nice job keeping the play alive and just finds a, a way to get rid of it right there. You know, so not much time here. Going to have to get something right on the boundary and be able to get out of bounds. Or you know, might take a shot in the end zone if you got an open guy. But uh, probably two, maybe three plays left, depending on if you can get out of bounds or not. But a sack's going to end the – can't take a sack. Third and five, two by two set. Sarvis takes the snap, sprints out, looks downfield, throws it downfield. It's intended there for 27. That is Carter, but he's in coverage and the ball's thrown out of bounds. Yeah, Davion Starks comes over from the safety spot. Georgetown does a nice job of going up and high pointing that ball and knocking it away. So uh, it's going to bring up fourth down, right? But you got nine seconds left. You really don't want to give Georgetown another play. Nope. Um, but probably got to, probably got to take the opportunity just to get this ball uh, up in the end zone. Probably going to have to move the pocket. You know that Georgetown pass rush. They're going to have all four guys standing up. Sure. They're going to, they're going to be uh, hot after him right here. So they're probably going to have to move the pocket and just try to throw something in the end zone. And that's what they're looking to do. Two by two set, and it's intercepted across the middle of the field. It's caught there by safety. Peyton Staniford, he's off to the races. Dodges some contact. Luckily for KCU there, what a tackle in the open field down the sideline there. That was your quarterback that made that uh, open field tackle. He did a nice job of, of uh, you know, one of the first things you're taught on an interception uh, defensively is block the quarterback. Yes, sir. Somebody blocked the quarterback. And, yes, sir. Uh, they tried, but just a great individual effort there from Sarvis to save another six points uh, from uh, Georgetown. Just like I said, going from a being down two scores to three scores, it would be huge going down three to four. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Coach, we're going to step out at halftime here. Your score, Georgetown 28, Kentucky Christian University 7. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members Choice Credit Union. Members Choice Credit Union has programs for first-time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members Choice Credit Union today. Members Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. 
In addition to the Greenup location, Stelts Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hannon Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy. With the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stelts Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hannon Drive, South Shore. Stelts Pharmacy. I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. And we're back in Grayson. Big thanks to MJ McKay here for keeping me straight on turning these knobs, by the way. Also, your score here in Grayson, uh, Kentucky Christian University uh, trails by, by three scores. It's 28-7 to seven here, Georgetown on top. I'll tell you how we got there real quick with your scoring summary. First touchdown of the game came with 8.24 to go in the first quarter. It was a four-yard pass from Drew Hartz to Aaron Maggard. Uh, for Georgetown, and uh, Chris Klein, PAT, made it 7-0. to zero. Uh, They immediately, on their very next series, had a, had a KCU three and out, and then they got the ball back, scored another touchdown with 6.35 to go in the first. It was a 43-yard touchdown pass from Drew Hartz to Josh Gary, and then another Chris Klein, PAT, made it 14-0 to zero at the end of one. Uh, second quarter, Georgetown on the, on the board immediately. First play into the, the second quarter. Uh, a one-yard touchdown run from Isaiah Cobb for Georgetown. And then a Chris Klein PAT that made the score 21-0. to uh, KCU answered, though, about two minutes later, well, almost three minutes later, 12.04 in, uh, on the clock in the second quarter. It was a seven-yard Devontae Williams touchdown run followed by Paul Rodriguez uh, PAT. That made the score 21-7. to so KCU within a couple scores there. And then with 2.25 on the clock before halftime, uh, final touchdown of the first half came from Georgetown's uh, Aaron Maggard on a 17-yard pass from Gary Sloniker. And uh, Chris Klein, PAT, means that your score at halftime is Georgetown 28, KCU 7. We're going to step out take another break. When we return, we'll have plenty more stats for you and some, uh, some more uh, analysis and a whole lot more football later on here from Grayson. Again, your score, 28-7, to Georgetown leads Kentucky Christian University. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. Make your everyday purchases faster, simpler, and more convenient with First National Bank's new contactless debit card, featuring a fresh new design and the ability to add your card to your phone's mobile wallet. Your debit card has never been more secure. Simply look for the contactless symbol at checkout, tap your contactless card, or hold your phone over the terminal and your payment is processed in seconds without your card number ever being exposed. Tap, pay, go. It's that easy with First National Bank. First National Bank in Cannonsburg, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Does your gas station or convenience store need a facelift? If so, call River City Builders at 473-4112 for your remedy. Big or small projects, River City's Builders is a company for all your needs. We have extensive experience in the petroleum industry, from routine gas dispenser and canopy maintenance to above-ground, underground tank and popping work to full-blown remodels and new builds. Call River City Builders at 473-4112 for all your petroleum needs. We'll cover your back and keep your customers pumping gas. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. 
Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. Back in Grayson here, under 20 minutes to go here in the halftime of the game between Kentucky Christian University, Georgetown uh, College, the Tigers of Georgetown College, and they're on top right now on the scoreboard 28-7. to And, Coach, it's time now for a look at the stats of the first half. Yeah, the story of this game so far has just been Georgetown's domination on offense. Uh, they've uh, converted up. They've got 15 uh, first downs compared to KCU's five. Um, Total offense, uh, they've run 45 plays for nearly 200 yards, just one shy of that. Um, KCU only 28 plays for 104 yards. Uh, Georgetown throwing the ball very effectively. A uh, combination of a quarter to play a little bit of two quarterbacks, Sloniker and Hart, uh, Hartz, um, have uh, combined for 22 uh, attempts, 14 completions uh, for 139 yards. Uh, whereas uh, KCU, um, uh, 17 attempts for eight yards and then an interception there on the final play of the half, uh, kind of just forcing the ball down the field. Uh, you know, really hate to see that you uh, go against uh, him for interceptions right there. Really didn't have much choice there on the last play of the half. Yeah, hey, got to do what you got to do. That's right, you got to yeah. do what you got to do right there. Um, as far as uh, rushing the ball. He also uh, made the tackle. He also made yeah, the tackle yeah. and saved six points yeah. right there. Really, uh, uh, that could have been um, – I could have put again that, like you said, that could have put the score at 35 to seven, and yeah. really been devastating to sure. give up a, a seven points on the last play uh, of the half. Uh, but as far as rushing the ball, uh, Georgetown uh, 23 attempts for 60 yards, KCU uh, 11 attempts for uh, 15 yards rushing so far. Um, time of possession has been. Uh, uh, basically all in the favor of uh, uh, Georgetown, 18 minutes to 11 minutes and 51 seconds for uh, KCU. Sure. Um, individually, you know, uh, even though that uh, Georgetown's only rushed the ball for 60 yards, they've done it with a, a stable of backs, a combination of uh, Darius Neal, Isaiah Cobb, and Quincy uh, Perrin have done a good job. They've, they've collected those 60 yards leading the way is, is that uh, – Frederick Douglass uh, product, Darius Neal with 37 uh, yards on his uh, six attempts. Uh, Isaiah Cobb has carried the ball 10 times but only has 27 yards. Um, Hartz and Sloniker have uh, combined uh, in the passing department. Uh, Sloniker come in late and uh, was four of eight, 44 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Hartz started the game and has had the majority of reps. He's 10 out of 14 for 95 yards and two touchdowns and with a long of 43. He has taken two sacks, though. Uh, they've spread the ball around receiving-wise. Gary, uh, Imes, and Maggard uh, – excuse me, Gary and Imes with three catches, Mer Maggard and Perrin with two catches apiece. Uh, the long there uh, going 43-yarder to Gary. Uh, that was a touchdown catch, uh, I think the second one, second touchdown of the game. Yep. Um, over on the KCU side, uh, 21 yards uh, uh, gain rushing for uh, uh, Williams. Uh, Sarvis has the quarterback has a couple of carries for five yards. Um, he is uh, eight out of 17 for 89 yards, as we said earlier. Um, four different guys have caught balls for uh, the Knights. Um, uh, the long being a, a long pass uh, to Rucker um, to kind of get the uh, score on their scoring drive of a 40 yard pass uh, that was able to be hauled in uh, for him. Um, so that's kind of a quick look at the at the statistics as far as uh, how it breaks down. Uh, again, the the big thing has been uh, their ability to kind of just control the ball. Georgetown talking about their ability to control the ball uh, on offense, just uh, outnumbering uh, uh, the number of plays, 45 to 28, stands out in the time of possession, 18 minutes versus 11 minutes for the Knights. Absolutely, and and, and that also goes that, that 48 minutes of, of possession. That's also 40 – or did you say 40? No, that's not 18. right. 18. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that also goes defensively, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. KCU spent a lot of time on the field. They've had to defend a lot of plays. 
And uh, early on, uh, those first uh, couple of touchdowns, uh, both of those drives started inside of uh, KCU territory, and uh, the, the defense kind of had their backs against the wall for a lot of this game. Although the, the offense did show some signs of life that they could get it done there in the second quarter, and they were able to put seven points up on the board. Um, but they, were, they I think they're going to get the ball coming out here uh, after halftime. Yeah. Um, and so it would be uh, obviously if they, you know, we talk about – the last four minutes sometimes of the half and the first four minutes of the half kind of being that magic eight minutes right sure, there that can sure. go a long way. And they, they, so, they set the pace for the rest of the half. That's right. So uh, hopefully uh, KCU can come out and uh, have a successful first drive and maybe get it down to a two-score game. Yeah. I mean, and, and if you're Coach Jake Russell right now in the locker room, that's what – you're, you're preaching to your team right now, we got to come out on our horse and we got to go. Absolutely. A lot of time left. A long game in college. Plenty of time left in this game sure. for them to get back in it. But it's going to have to start with you know, uh, a positive offensive possession here when they get this ball uh, coming out after the halftime. They need to, at the very least, be able to, to flip the field, get a couple of first downs, and you know, if they if they are able to pin Georgetown back deep, the KCU defense has played well at times and maybe can get some even better field position. But uh, it would be nice if they could come out and get seven points on the board, and I'm sure that's what Coach Russell's talking about. They're in there taking a look, I'm sure, at uh, what their kids are saying they can and cannot do. They'll try to find a matchup that they like uh, and to see if they can uh, script them out, maybe five to seven plays that they like coming out after the half. Yes, sir. Coach, we're going to step out take a break. Um, we've got still plenty of time here in halftime, but uh, we've got a whole lot more football to come, so don't go away. Back after this, your score 28-7, to seven, Georgetown leads K uh, Kentucky Christian University. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members Choice Credit Union. Members Choice Credit Union has programs for first time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members Choice Credit Union today. Members Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. In addition to the Greenup location, Stultz Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hanna Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy, with the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hanna Drive, South Shore. Stultz Pharmacy I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Back in Grace in Kentucky, your score here at the half, just about 11 and a half to go here at halftime. Your score, Georgetown 28 and Kentucky Christian University 7. As looks like Georgetown, a few of their players, skilled players, kickers, making their way back out onto the field. Uh, coach, can KCU still in the locker room. And uh, we, we kind of talked about it. What, but uh, if you're Coach Russell right now in the locker room, what, what, what are you telling your team? Well, You've done it for 31 years. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> well, what what he's telling me is kind of what he said in the pregame to you is they're going they're focusing on themselves. That's right. right. That's right. They're going they're telling their kids right now. Hey, you know this is about it. Don't worry about the score right now. Right? Can't worry about that. Can't worry about anything negative that happened in the in the first half. We're going to try to get those mistakes corrected. They're going to try to get a list of things. This offensively, they're they're thinking you know try to get a list of things they think they can do sure. coming out. 
after halftime. And, you know, and so that's what they're talking to their kids about right now is just not worrying about what has happened in the past. Don't worry about any mistakes that were made. Get those things corrected. Try to come out and get some positive plays going here in this half. They're by no means out of the game. Right. right? It's a three-score game. Lots that's of, right. Lots of football left. Anything can happen in these games. You know, Georgetown – does look to have a handle on things right now. Oh, but yeah. we've also seen, you know, those things switch. So he's just telling them to come out, play with that passion and that excitement uh, that he was talking about. It's easy to be excited in the first quarter. It's easy to be excited when the, the sun was still up and the score was still 0-0. Zero, zero. Sure. Find out who really likes football now. That's what right. What kids <laughs> are willing to really keep yeah. to come out. And you'll find out about something about the intestinal fortitude of your guys right now. And so, you know, so – He's going to be looking at – he's going to tell them, hey, we're going to get all this on film. We're going to see who plays. You know, for 60 minutes, we're going to find out who's willing to dig deep when it's not easy and keep playing. And we want to take a step forward. It's the first season, first game of the season. It's a non-conference game. And so they're going to try to get, you know, again, no scrimmages. We talked about that earlier. This is the first, you know, live situation they've been in. So we're going to – they'll. I think we'll see some improvement, you know, some things in the second half. But – we want to, I want to look for see if they keep playing hard. I'm with you. I'm with you, Coach. Uh, and, and he may not use those exact words, but I feel like you're about right dead on. on uh, <laughs> you know, let's focus on ourselves and let's come out here and play football. Absolutely. There's no doubt. That's all you can do, right? You know, they'll, they'll look at schematically what they can do. You know, they'll look at Georgetown as far as what they're doing, what they feel like they can do, maybe some runs, sure. some different passes they want to do. Sure. But it's all about them. Right? Yeah. It's the, all about all The schematics about are one thing, but right. our focus is on us. That's right. Yep. That's this exactly is game right. one, and yep. yep. Hey, Coach, while we're uh, while we got a few minutes here, uh, don't forget the Cool Hits Sports Channel. You know, we're bringing you all kinds of high school uh, sports action from around the area. Tomorrow night, August 26th, uh, we've got Greenup County versus Martin County. That's uh, uh, seven. We'll be on at 7:10 for each one of these. Boyd County at Ashland, Pineville at Fairview, West Carter at Fleming County, East Carter at Rowan County. McGoffin County versus Prestonsburg, and Morgan County versus Betsy Lane. Those are all on the Cool Hit Sports uh, Network tomorrow uh, evening. And if you'd like more information about that, go to coolhits1057.com. You'll find the schedule there, and then you just click the link beside the game you want to listen to. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And uh, I'll be – you won't be with me tomorrow night, but I'll be doing uh, Martin County at Greenup County. Yep, I'll be at uh, Spring Valley in Huntington High. A little, you know, a, a West Virginia flavor here for anybody's listening over there. A big uh-huh. AAA matchup between two teams, uh, two perennial powers really in the in the tri-state area. Sure, uh, Huntington made it to the uh, state championship game last year. Spring Valley was a, a quarterfinal team. Yep, and uh, so uh, they'll they'll kick it off with a rivalry game. You know, seven, eight miles separate the schools, you know, across the Cabell County, Wayne County line, and that's always an exciting game when uh, Huntington and Spring Valley get together. I won't be there, but I do expect some score uh, updates from you and some text messages. Uh, Also, while we got just a second, don't forget the Good Cheer program. Every New episodes every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on the Cool Hits Gospel Channel. Uh, They also air on Sunday mornings on Cool Hits 105.7 FM in Ashland, Kentucky. And again, on the uh, Gospel Channel online Sundays at noon, all available, or all episodes, I should say, are available on demand uh, on the Cool Hits app for any device or at coolhits1057.com under podcast. That's the show I do, Coach. Just try to bring a little good news each week and share a little bit about our our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and talk to some people from around the area. We've had had a pretty eclectic group of people on there. We had the uh, WWE Hall of Famer on there and had – Grammy nominated gospel singers on there, and then we also had uh, Coach David Manning on there this week, the athletic director for KCU. So you never know who you might hear on there, but uh, tune in. Uh, good, the Good Cheer program on uh, Cool Hits uh, 105.7. You can find more information on uh, Good Cheer program Facebook. I encourage you to go on there uh, for more information, Coach. A few more minutes here at halftime. We're going to step out, take one more break, and uh, then we'll be getting that much closer to some more football. So don't go away back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. 
Need some extra money for home improvements or other purchases? How about a home equity line of credit with absolutely no closing costs? We have some exciting news from our loan department at First National Bank. Right now, open a home equity line of credit at First National and we will pay all the fees at closing. Hurry into one of our eight locations to take advantage of this great offer. First National Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Are you having trouble keeping your parking lot lit? Is customer safety one of your top priorities? If so, call River City's Builders at 473-4112 for all your lighting needs. We have bucket truck and boom crane truck services. We have extensive experience in exterior lighting and parking lot lighting maintenance. No need to ever be in the dark again. Remember, call River City's Builders at 473-4112 for all your lighting needs. We will light your path to success. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. Back in Grayson, Kentucky, about four minutes to go here at halftime, Coach, as uh, both teams back out on the field, both of them in their stretch lines on the on the respective end zones or at least down the red zone and uh, getting things warmed up. We talked about KCU. What, what do you think uh, Coach Oliver is telling his group? They're just going to say more of the same. Sure. Right? Things have been pretty good uh, uh, with them. They've done a good job of controlling the tempo of the game. Uh, they've used their fast pace uh, when they wanted to, especially after getting a first down, they right back up on the ball. They get in a, or if they get in a second and short, third and short, they get right up on the ball, put a lot of pressure on the defense. They've done a good job of slowing it down at times, and especially in second and long, third and long situations to make sure that they got a, a productive play called. they able to get a look at the KCU defense and then uh, get a play called from the sideline. So uh, I think as far as their operation has gone really smooth, you know, considering, again, first yeah. time, you know, new coach, uh, new offense, no scrimmage game. So I think their operation of their offense has, has been uh, – uh, they've done a very good job in that tonight. It uh, doesn't seem to be – they've used a couple of different quarterbacks. They've spread the ball around a lot. Defensively, I think they're – you know, the thing that has hurt – KCU the most is that pass rush. Any time uh, that uh, they force KCU into a uh, passing situation, they're able to get after them with that front four. They have not had to blitz much. Um, and the, those uh, four down line, they do a good job of bringing in a, a, a pass rush package uh, on third down. And uh, those guys have been very effective at putting a lot of heat on the KCU quarterback. I'm with you. And, and I think especially early on those first few drives, I think that was the difference maker as far as offensive productivity. Casey, you just not able to get things going offensively because there was no time in the backfield. Yeah. On they, the flip side of that, sorry, Coach. On the flip side of that, Georgetown, plenty of time. Pocket was there getting the ball in the air, moving down the field. Yeah. Uh, Georgetown's only recorded one sack tonight, but uh, one of the things that's not on the stat sheet is the number of hurries. There you go. And um, it's been – Plentiful. They've yeah. had but even the, the two big completions uh, that KC was able to get. Both of those were back foot long throws from uh, Sarvis, kind of leaning back with pressure in his face. And uh, he did a good job of uh, taking the hit and delivering the ball down the field. That's right. Thank you again for tuning in on Cool TV uh, here on the Cool Hit Sports Network. Uh, KCU and Georgetown, Kentucky Christian University, the Knights, and the Georgetown College Tigers. In game number one of the college football season, Coach. Now, uh, getting it kicked off here. Uh, we got the week zero technically yeah. coming up for uh, for the for the big boys this week. Yep. Uh, one of the big games everybody's kind of got circled here in that week zero is that 
uh, Nebraska and uh, Northwestern game in uh, Dublin, Ireland. Uh, that'll be on Saturday and um, interesting kickoff uh, overseas, but a uh, big game for Scott Frost and his crew. Uh-huh. Um, you know, they've, uh, he's certainly one of the coaches you look at this year that might be on the hot seat a little bit. Sure. And uh, so it'll uh, be interesting. They'll be about a 13-point favorite, but you know, a long road trip for both teams right there. Uh, There's a lot of factors in this game. A lot of factors, and it'll be interesting. You know, Northwestern tends to be uh, – their season's kind of be up and down. You know, they have one kind of poor season, and then they'll be back up. And so last year they were 3-8, and eight, and uh, so uh, could be uh, a uh, an up season for Northwestern. You right. just never know if that trend continues. Um, so uh, both, th- both those teams will be excited, and uh, it'll be – Cool to see some uh, some FBS football on TV uh, yeah. this weekend. I, I'm just glad it's football season. Yeah, you got uh, kickoff last week uh, for uh, Kentucky and Ohio. Yes. A lot of local games. West Virginia getting it kicked off tonight with their week one. Um, a couple of early games, uh, you know, uh, local interest. Uh, Cabell Midland Knights uh, up to uh, traveling up to Charleston to take on George Washington. Uh, the Knights, one of the favorites, maybe. Uh, uh, to uh, to make some noise, maybe get up to Wheeling Island, but they're down at halftime. Maybe a little bit surprising for some people. I see they're down 14 to seven at halftime. Uh, the other game going on in Charleston is South Charleston and Morgantown, and uh, Morgantown uh, has a uh, commanding 29 nothing lead in the third quarter on that one. That's a big. That's that's a big one too. Yeah, big South one Charleston too. with the new coach this year and Carl Lee. Uh, 13 or 14 year NFL veteran with the Vikings uh, played at South Charleston played at Marshall so kind of a, a local guy but he's got his hands full getting that program turned back around and, absolutely uh, you know just the first game for them just the first step for coach Lee and uh, he'll eventually get that going there at South Charleston coach looks like we're ready for some action here they got 15 minutes on the clock and the Georgetown kickoff teams out there uh, the KCU return team and here we go coach you know, as we talked about, a good first possession here is critical for the Knights. Good kick here from Drew Raider. It's caught by uh, Devontae Williams, and he immediately goes to the left all the way over to the sideline. He catches it inside the 15, gets it all the way out almost to the 50, almost to the 45, I guess. And the ball is going to be – go out of bounds right at the 43 yard line so about a 28 yard return coach. yeah and a pretty nice tackle there by somebody you might not expect the guy that kicked it off drew yeah. raider there you a go pretty nice open field tackle to keep uh, to keep that from being about another uh, 15 or 20 yards you know you gotta like that uh, from a kicker yeah you know, having that kind of i'll use your word intestinal fortitude <laughs> and uh, just coming you know coming up there and making a play because let's face it he was off the races. Yeah, that was no arm tackle either. He no. threw his body in there and cut his legs out from under him a lot like a safety would do. That's right. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Motion from the wing back from left to right. Hand off, and now a pitch back to the quarterback. He sends it way downfield, and it's going to be picked off. Coach yeah. Sarvis got the ball. It was, it was kind of a, a fake play there, a hand off, and then a toss back to uh, – Back to Sarvis. I guess you'd call that flea flicker. Flea flicker, you, coach? absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, that was escaping my mind. It's <laughs> flea flicker. And uh, Sarvis sent it downfield, and there was just nothing there. Yeah, I kind of threw it at kind of an ill-advised throw. He'd come out with a trick play and try to catch Georgetown. Uh, safety's being aggressive there. Uh, but they weren't biting. They stayed on it. And, uh, um, you know, you take a shot to maybe try to get back in the game with a trick play, but it doesn't work, and that's going to send KCU's defense back out on the field one play um, into the half. Not what you're looking for if you're Kentucky Christian University. Here we go. Georgetown offense, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Looks like a tight end on the left as well as Hart steps back to pass, finds on a check down route his running back. Uh, Cobb on the right-hand side, and he fights forward for a first down, gain of about 11 yards. So here comes the tempo. They get a first down. They're going to try to get right back up on the ball. Uh, Hart starts to drive off with a nice safe pass to Cobb out of the backfield. First down and 10 yards to go from the Georgetown 46. Trips to the left as Hart takes the ball, throws it to receiver number two on a screen play, and he's brought down immediately after making the catch. No gain. As a matter of fact, a loss of about a yard. Yeah, that looked like uh, it looks like number forty-three uh, for the Knights over there, Quavius DQ uh-huh. Brown, uh, making a nice uh, open field tackle, uh, doing a good job keeping the screen play uh, there. They threw it behind the line; he kept it behind the line. That's right. That's right. Can't ask for much more than that out there. 
Two by two set, running back uh, offset to the left. Parts in the gun, takes the snap, pitch over to his left, goes to Cobb. Cobb fights forward, crosses the line of scrimmage, fights forward for a gain of about four yards. But after the loss of two, it's going to be third down and about six, seven, about six yards to go, Coach. Yeah, a little toss sweep play, same side sweep. Quarterback tosses it to the, the back there on his left. Uh, KCU defense does a nice job of supporting that out of the secondary there. So here we go on third down, ball on the 50-yard line, ball at midfield, I guess you would say. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Running back offset to the left-hand side of the quarterback, and he's under pressure. He has to sprint out to his right. He finds an open receiver in the flats, gets it over to Josh Gary, who fights forward for a first down and more. Gain of about, uh, what do you think, was five, 10, about 15 yards, 16 yards there, Coach, I believe. Wine Kent with a quick pressure off the edge for KCU, but he's not able to, to maintain contain on the rush. Hertz does a good job of kind of escaping out, keeps his eyes down the field, uh, and uh, makes a nice uh, throw down the field. Had a chance for a sack right there. Like to see him rush that upfield shoulder and keep him in the pocket and allow those other guys to, to clean it up. Sure. 12-yard gain on the pass there. First down from the 38-yard line of KCU. Trips to the left for Georgetown. One receiver to the right and a motion across to the left out of the backfield, but quarterback looks downfield, almost finds his guy, but great pass coverage there from KCU. And I was looking there to see, I didn't know if the, the, the defender got a hand on him or not. Yeah, I think that's Latavius Johnson, the quarter corner, who's made a couple of nice plays tonight. So again, that's another play off the off the uh, running back screen to the trip side. They fake it out there. They get a one-on-one -on -one matchup, uh, but uh, Latavius is uh, up to the challenge right there and does a good job defending the post route and uh, knocks it away. It looks like we've got a player down here, Coach. It's one of those KCU defenders. I do not see a number. Yeah, very difficult to kind of see the numbers in general. but The trainers are out there. Down. Coach Russell's out there with him, too. He's yeah. on his feet uh, and standing up. Looks like, is that, uh, is that Brian Hughes? Number 12, I believe it is, Coach. Yeah, number 12, Brian Hughes. Yeah. Not sure Six. what uh, what was the issue. Yeah, I'm not sure either. He was able to jog off under his own That's power, right. though. That's right. Yeah. Th uh, third, second down, 10 yards to go from the 38-yard line for the Georgetown offense here. 12.38 to go here in the third quarter. Georgetown on top, 28-7. To Hartz lines up in the gun, running back to his left. Motion from receiver number three on the left-hand side, but it's going to be a handoff up the middle. This one's going to go to the up back in the backfield. That's Isaiah Cobb for a gain of about a yard. Number three, Cameron Arthur come up and, and uh, makes a nice feel right there, uh, fills up the alley, able to get him on the ground uh, with a big hit right there. Uh, kind of reckless regard for his body right there. Uh, Cobb, a big, a big body running back, and he threw it up in there and made a nice stop. Absolutely. Three receivers to the left again for Georgetown. Snap goes to Hartz. He steps back, looks downfield, throws it down the left sideline, down the Georgetown sideline, incomplete. He was intending to throw the ball there to Josh Gary, uh, but he's just not able to haul it in. But yeah. uh, some more good pass coverage from KCU. Yeah, I've been very impressed with KCU's uh, job to match up on the corners with these guys tonight and defend a, a, a fair number of deep throws from Georgetown. Uh, they've done a good job matched up uh, when they've uh, been in man-to-man -man situations. It's going to be fourth down and nine yards, Coach, and the offense still on the field. But we remember Hartz also punted the ball from, from this formation uh, earlier on in the game. Looks like they tried to hard count him here. Two by two set, running back off set to the left of Hartz. He looks back over, gets another call, and they're going to run a play. He steps back, now back up into the pocket under pressure, but he takes off and sprints out. Crosses the 30-yard line. He needed to get to the 30, uh, to the 28, 29, and he does. He, yeah. A gain of about 12 yards, 11, 12 yards, but enough for the first down. Gutsy run right there from Drew Hart's kind of uh, needed uh, 
that yardage to move the chain, able to kind of lower his shoulder right there. He wasn't going into a slide, uh, took the hit, and uh, moved the chains. That's right. First and 10 this time from the 27, so a gain of 11 yards there on the run. And we've got first and 10 Georgetown. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. And motion from right to left from that wide out. And he keeps on rolling right out it and gets the ball there. Hart dumps it over to him on a swing pass down the sideline, down the Georgetown sideline. He goes, avoids one tackle, and able to get enough for another first down. Yeah, another kind of perimeter pass play there, lateral, pretty safe throw um, behind the line of scrimmage. Good wide receiver blocking. And a good hard run there to finish the play. Yeah, 12-yard gain on that play. First and 10 this time from the 15 as the clock's still running down almost to 11 minutes in the third here. And we've got trips to the right, no wideouts to the left. And we are going to have mm. a little dump-off pass here to a wide open number three receiver on the right-hand side. That is Simon Sharp who brings it in for a 15-yard touchdown. Yeah, they do a little uh, have a, a little RPO play there, and we get a busted coverage from the KCU defense. And uh, Sharp is uh, running wide open in the end zone there with uh, nobody around him. A pretty easy throw uh, for Drew Hart's right there, and uh, uh, Georgetown comes right out, takes advantage of the interception on the first play uh, from uh, KCU, and uh, marches right down the field. The PAT is good as well. That one from. Chris Klein, that makes the score 35-7. to, to seven. Uh, Georgetown on top right now uh, over the KCU Knights. 10.59 to go here in the third quarter. That was the first uh, first score of the second half, Coach, and not what you're looking for if you're KCU. No, we talked about them coming out and having a positive uh, possession after, the, after halftime, but uh, apparently at halftime they decided to go with a little trickery and a little trick play to come out, the flea flicker. Um, Georgetown not biting on that. Their safeties were very disciplined, stayed back, made the interception. Um, I'm sure um, uh, Sharvis would like to have that throwback, maybe just uh, um, took the sack and uh, took a second down. But uh, give credit to Georgetown. Uh, they take the ball uh, from, uh, from the interception, really, and march it right down. A key play there, third and long. Uh, Drew Hurts able to – to scramble, that frustrates you on defense when you have a couple of good plays. You get them in third and long. Yep. You get the coverage, but the quarterback pulls it down, avoids the pressure, scrambles uh, for the 12 or 13 yards needed, and that's just uh, that's very frustrating. They add on to, the, to their lead, and um, a lot of the energy kind of uh, sucked out of that uh, KCU sideline right now. That's right. You know, We didn't see Drew Hart's rushing in the first half. But he proved there that he definitely had the ability to do so. Yeah, he's not going to, uh, you know, not a lot of planned runs for nope, him. Nope. Uh, but they did a nice job of uh, uh, picking up some yards when he had to. Short kickoff lands just inside the 30, and that's where it will, that's where KCU will take over. Uh, fielded there by, I believe that is Josh Trailer. And uh, as soon as he picked the ball up, contact made, and that's where the ball's going to lie. Yeah, a little pooch kick there from Georgetown. They didn't want to kick it deep and nope. have, to have to have their uh, kicker uh, uh, make this, the yeah, saving yeah. tackle again. So they just decided to pooch it in there and, uh, and play coverage. First and 10 for KCU from their own 30-yard line. Two-by-two two set, running back offset to the left. Kajaka Sarvis calls for motion from the right-hand side, but then hands off to the up back in the backfield. That's Devontae Williams who's off to the races. Crosses the 50-yard line, and he's brought down right about the 47 of Georgetown. So it'll be first down Kentucky Christian University. Yeah, he's able to avoid a tackle there from DJ White right at the beginning of right at the beginning of that play, right at the line of scrimmage. Gets his shoulder square and makes a nice run. Absolutely. A, a very nice run. First down, 10 yards to go for the Knights from the 49-yard line. So he got I guess his knee went down first. It'll be first and 10 from the Georgetown 49-yard line as the KCU offense uh, over here at the sideline with Coach Russell. I didn't see a, a timeout or anything. Did you, no, Coach? No, D.J. White here, the defensive end from Georgetown, that little injury timeout there. To oh, help, I did, okay. Yeah, to help him get off the field. Okay. Um, that's the, uh, the kid there that missed the, the original tackle there. Uh, looked like he might have been cramping up a little bit. I got you. So they get him off the field. They'll bring in uh, – Number 41, 
uh, Colton Cornish to take his spot at defensive end. You've been through You know those cramps are no joke. That's no fun at all. No, absolutely not. Once they start, they are difficult to uh, to keep from uh, getting the rest of the night. That's right. Two receivers to the left, two backs in the backfield. Sarvis hands off to one of them. That's Gerald Daniels who gets the edge and runs down the right sideline, the Georgetown sideline. The ball was right in the middle of the field, and he goes for a gain of about four yards. Yeah, a nice little inside zone run play, and that play has the ability to kind of bang up in the A gap or it might bounce, and he was able to kind of bounce that and, as you said, get the edge and get his shoulders downhill and get a little yardage. Yes, sir. Third down and seven – or second down, seven yards to go. Two by – or two receivers left – one to the right. We've got a wing back this time on the left-hand side. Sarvis takes the snap, and he throws it downfield. It's no one of those free plays, Coach. I didn't see who jumped, but I guess somebody did. Yeah, for about the uh, fourth time tonight, uh, Georgetown is in the neutral zone. I believe it was uh, Lawson Vaughn, the right defensive end, a little bit anxious to get after the quarterback right there. Uh, got into the neutral zone, and Sarvis, again, heads in enough to push the ball down the field. Didn't get anything of it. Didn't, didn't uh, uh, get a completion, but able to get five yards and the down over. Sure, sure. And, and you know, that's what, you, what you're what you saying there, that he's headsy enough to do that. That's kind of an underrated uh, underrated uh, trait for a quarterback. You know, nobody's saying, hey, it's a free play. He's got, the, he's got the presence of mind to do that himself. That's right. Two receivers left, one to the right, wing back to the left, handoff up the middle. It goes to Devon. Nope, fake handoff to Williams. Sprint out there under pressure for Sarvis, and he was almost picked off, Coach. Yeah, they fake the power play, pull the guard, lead the H back. Uh, uh, Sarvis keeps it, uh, kind of uh, roll the pocket to his right, but uh, underthrown, uh, yeah. uh, ball underthrown there. Uh, sets up a third down. Uh, um, really like to see your offense be able to convert this and stay on the field. Yes, sir. I would say that uh, Coach Russell and the offensive staff are, are figuring on two downs here. No reason to punt this thing if sure. you don't get it. Sure. So they're looking at two downs to get the next three yards. Two receivers to the left and a tight end on the left as well. We've got a motion from the number two receiver, and it's going to be a jet, a handoff. There it goes <laughs> to Richmond Sims, and he tries to get the edge, gets a couple yards, maybe a yard, I should say, and it's going to be fourth and one, Coach. Yeah, a little confusion in the backfield right there. I think Devontae Williams uh, almost got in the way of, uh, of number 16 right there, uh, Jared Hampton on the, on the sweep. Uh, we got – that's, yeah, he's the running back, though. Okay, yeah, yep. we've got two 16s on the board there. Yep. But Hampton yep. uh, able uh, able still to get some yards, even though it was a little confusion. So fourth and one, and we're under center for the 16. Coach, we've got a quarterback sneak there. Yeah, interesting formation from yeah. KCU right there. Uh, they line up as if uh, they're in the shotgun, but uh, the running back there, uh, Hampton, lines comes come motion, lines up, uh, stops at the center, gets under center, takes it for a quarterback sneak, and they move the chains. The first down, Kentucky Christian University. That's what it's all about. Now, big first down, keeps the defense off the field, give them another few minutes. Yes, sir. Two backs in the backfield, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Sarvis in the gun, running backs on both sides of him as he takes the snap and looks downfield, almost picked off again. A great move there, Coach. I don't mean to cut you off, but a great move by Chad Haller and the linebacker. It, the, the ball was behind him, but he redirected, got a hand on it, and knocked it down. Yeah, he, he had, there was an open receiver right there, but he yeah. was able to kind of settle down the hole and reach back with his right hand and knock that ball down. Uh, a really athletic play for a, for a big guy. Holman uh, goes about 6'3", 235, and yeah. showed some agility there. And he Well, he was on his way to the flats. Mm -hmm. He was on his way out there and redirected. That was, that was a good move. Trips left, one receiver right. Sarvis takes the ball in a check down route. He throws it to his running back, Williams, who gets some yards after contact, fights his way forward for a gain of about nine yards. It's going to be close to a first down, and I believe it's going to be a first down KCU, Coach. Yeah, all Williams right there. Yes, able sir. to take a, a short check down. Sarvis does a good job of not forcing anything, sure. takes the check down, and then you got to love uh, Williams. We talked about playing with passion and heart. Right there's a guy that hasn't quit. I'm with you. Now, he turned that thing up there and made two or three guys miss and was able to convert for a first down. Yes, sir. Two by two set. One receiver in the backfield behind the quarterback who's in the gun. A receiver motion to the right. It, it go Richmond Sims, and it's a screen to him, and he is hit hard 
as he tries to make the catch there. It's an incomplete pass. Jacob Brass comes out of the secondary right there. A little RPO play. They, they fake the jet. And they're kind of reading that outside linebacker there. They hit the guy. Uh, the quarterback pulls it, throws it in the flat. But Brass comes down from his uh, safety position and yeah. makes a really nice break on the ball and a really nice fun. You know, he, he could have took a – uh, you know, a head shot right there. But no, he did yeah. a nice job of putting his shoulder in there, wrapping up, and just making a nice hard hit. A completely fundamental tackle, Absolutely. but a, a good-looking one at that. Correct. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, a hand, a fake handoff, and a pass over the middle off the hands of intended receiver John, Jonifer Carter, I believe that is. Yep. Another RPO play. They run. They got the receiver on the right. They run the inside zone to the left. He's able to pull it. You know, reading that defense. You know, when we say RPO, we I mean run run pass option. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's got the ability to pull that thing. He had the slant right there. Just threw it a little bit behind him. It was a good read. Sure. Just did an next uh, inaccurate throw. That's right. Third down, ten yards to go. Trips to the right, and KCU tries for the hard count. No one on the defense moved. So we got another call into the game here. Sarvis the quarterback, and he's going to pull the hand off, try for some yards, not able to do anything. Just, yep. The pocket just kind of collapsed there, Coach. Yeah, it? well played there by the Georgetown defense. So that's going to bring up fourth down. No reason to rim four down territory, no reason to, to go for a field goal here. Right. Well. you got some different personnel coming on. I'm not sure. I don't see Paul Rodriguez, the kicker, out on nope. the field. Sarvis stays on the field. Fourth down, 11 yards to go. We're definitely getting another play of offense here. Yeah, we're we'll getting. They go to their 10 personnel. They yep. get four wides on the field now. Two by two set. One receive or one running back to the left. That's Williams. And we've got a flag on the play. Yeah. The right tackle there for uh, uh, Kentucky Christian got just a little bit a little bit anxious. Uh, they saw. Uh, they uh, Georgetown rotated from uh, from a two uh, safety look down to a one, and they were going to bring uh, number 41 there, Colton Cornish, off the edge, and uh, look like uh, number 56 there, the right tackle, um, uh, Ripper from uh, from case you got a little bit anxious in the fall start. So we go from third and about 11, or third and about 10 to third and 15, and here we go. Sarvis under pressure finds an open receiver. Downfield for a big game, but not quite enough. A gain of about 10 yards, but it's third and 15. Yeah, fourth down play, so they're going to turn it over on downs right there. A, a nice play by Sarvis getting out of the park, being athletic, keeping his eyes down the field and finding, a, giving his receiver a chance to make a play. But That's Georgetown right. playing coverage, keeps everything in front of them. They rally to the ball, and a, a turnover on downs will send that uh, KCU defense back out there. But with a little break that time, a few first downs from the offense, just weren't able to quite finish right there. Absolutely. Gaither on the catch there, and here we go. Georgetown offense out on the field. Two receivers right, one to the left. Running back to the right of Hartz as he calls for a receiver to go in motion, and he does from left to right in deep motion. And another one of those swing passes out of the backfield, and the KCU defense there to blow that up. Yeah, nice job by the by the defense there rallying to the ball. You know the advantage of those swing screens there, throwing them out out of the backfield is that you can block immediately. That ball's completed behind the line sure. of scrimmage. Sure. Well, no like you offensive. said, it's a, it's a run. Yes, it's yeah. basically a run play, a perimeter run. And uh, the receivers are able to go ahead and engage uh, blocking uh, with, uh, without the fear of any pass interference, offensive pass interference, because that ball is completed behind the line of scrimmage. And another upside to that, it's the running back is catching it in full stride. Absolutely. It's a quick way to get on the perimeter. Yes, sir. Two receivers left, one to the right. Wing back moves from left to right, and Hartz drops back to pass, and his pass is knocked away at the line of scrimmage. And blown dead. Yep. So, an incomplete pass there makes it third and long, Coach. Third down, 12 yards to go. Yep, big number 90, Montrez Hopkins gets his hands up and knocks that ball down. Uh, good job of pushing into the backfield. But when he saw he uh, was not going to get home for the sack, he was able to get his hands up and uh, get a, uh, a pass break up. I wish it had uh, Trez Hopkins. I wish it had his height and weight. It's not listed on here, but he's just a freshman. Yeah, a young guy, but uh, he looks good out there. Uh, pushing, uh, got a nice push up the field and uh, had enough. Uh, was savvy enough to get his hands up uh, when uh, he saw he wasn't going to get home. Absolutely. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right, running back to the right of quarterback Hartz as he steps back, looks downfield, and then finds a receiver 
about four yard gain there. He threw the ball, caught the ball, and tackled immediately right there. So about a three, four yard gain. Yeah, great, great defensive awareness right there. Able to keep everything. They weren't going to allow any deep throws right, right. there. Yep. Uh, it made him uh, uh, check the ball down and then rally uh, up uh, on that and uh, get it get for a short gain, which is no hurt. Now we've we got to get the uh, punt return out on the field. There you go. Fourth down, eight yards, and it is going to be a punt from Georgetown. Back deep for KCU. That's Richmond Sims in the ball. Rolls off. A, a, good, a decent punt there. I was trying to wait and see what, what was going to happen there. Yeah, a little rugby-style yeah. punt. Sims yeah. uh, rolls out to his right and kicks it end over end. And on all these turf fields, you get such a long bounce. And yeah, that buddy. ball – you know, uh, bounded for about 20 or five yards. Uh, very difficult to field those kind of punts, a directional punt toward the sideline and the advantage uh, of getting those rolls. And Sims did the right thing there. He could have probably come up and, and tried to scoop the ball up, mm -hmm. but you'd have had a defender right in your face. Yeah, yeah. Coming full sprint. Yeah, that's a risky play. He did a Absolutely. good job staying away from it. The punter did a good job of uh, directional kick there. We do have a flag on the play, so we'll, we'll see what uh, downfield – uh, near to where the returner was, wait for a uh, it's sign over, from the official. Over close to the ball, too, Coach. Yep. Referees were together kind of conferencing it there, but looks like the, the sideline judge is over talking with Coach Oliver over on the uh, Georgetown sideline. Yeah, Whitehead is kind of looking over there to see what he wants to do. Yep, here we go. Illegal substitution on defense, so uh, they'll probably just take that uh, at the end of the kick. Yeah. That'll back them up five more. There you go. So, if you remember, they, their punt team, or their return team, excuse me, came on a little bit late. I think they were waiting to see what Georgetown was going to do before they sent personnel out on the field. Yeah, that's one of those, you know, uh, early season operational deals. Sure. Georgetown. Uh, defense on the field for the first time in a little while. Uh, KCU back out on offense. And here we go. It's going to be a handoff. No. Quarterback's going to keep it. We've also, Coach, we've got – no, it was a handoff. I'm sorry. That one goes to Williams. He moves right along for a gain of about eight yards. We've also got another quarterback in the game, Coach. Yeah, I'm trying to catch a number on that. I am too. Nonetheless, trips to the left receiver, one receiver to the right. Quarterback's going to hold on to it and march ahead right up the gut for a first down. He saw a little window of opportunity. He took it and got the first down. That could be Jarrett Hampton. I, I wouldn't swear to it. Uh, it I, I can't tell you enough how difficult KCU numbers are to see from the press box. But that might be number 16, Jarrett Hampton. Coach, is that number 10? Louis DeUlio. I think that is who that is. Okay. Two-by-two two set. Motion from left to right from the number two receiver. And uh, DeUlio picked it up under heavy pressure, able to get it on a little shovel pass over there on his right-hand side to uh, for the number two receiver on the right side. And he moved ahead for a pretty big gain considering. Yeah, just an instinctive play right there. The, yeah. the shotgun snap was low, and he was able to knock it down and just find his running back right there. That was just uh, a broken play turned into a few yards. That's right. I think that was Gideon uh, on the catch there. I'm not sure. Two receivers left, one to the right. We've got two backs in the backfield on both sides of DeUlio. Now with the right-hand side running back, Williams goes in motion, but it's going to be a handoff up the middle and about a three-yard gain close to enough for the first down. They're going to go ahead and move the chain, so that'll be first down to Kentucky Christian University. Yeah, DeJulio's got them on the move here a little bit, the second, second first down in this series. And they do it with a little inside zone run. Absolutely. Two-by-two two set again for the Knights. As DeUlio, the man calling the shots out on the field, he's moving his receiver over in uh, making it now trips to the left, one receiver to the right, and he takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and looks downfield 
almost intercepted. He was trying to find uh, D.T. Gideon uh, right about the left hash, about 20 yards downfield. But uh, ball a little bit underthrown and almost picked off. Yeah, they let Louie uh, throw the ball downfield there for the first time. They trying to uh, – they're on first down, try to take a shot. Uh, Louie, he's a 6'2", 195-pound uh, uh, sophomore quarterback. We saw him during the spring game, too, and I remember that we said his name a lot. Yeah. Yep. Very athletic. He does a good job using his legs. He Absolutely. can run He can uh, run and throw. And there he pulls the hand off and marches ahead for a gain of about a yard. He likes to keep the ball now. A lot of these, he does. these, uh, these uh, read runs uh, that uh, they're running right now where he can hand it off or keep it. He has a, tendency to, <laughs> yeah. he has a tendency to pull it. Yep. He likes to get it up in there. Yep. And he so, can move. Yeah. He, he's very quick. Looks to be a strong kid. So, third and long, though, now. We'll see what he's got. He's going to have to throw the ball here most likely. Third down, nine yards, two by two set. Deulio with a running back to his right. He's going to take the snap, drop back. Look downfield. He had a little bit of a window of opportunity there, an open receiver, but not just under th- the ball, just too low, I guess. Yeah, kind of underthrown a little bit yeah. of a free runner there coming off the edge uh, for uh, Georgetown. That looked to be uh, number 41, Colton Cornish. We've called his name a few times tonight. Uh, he was uh, originally signed uh, from uh, Eastern Kentucky University. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, spent some time down in Richmond. Uh, ended up transferring to Georgetown. He's a very productive player uh, tonight for uh, Georgetown. That's cool. we got another punter on the field here too, Coach. Hmm. Uh, Paul Rodriguez usually does has the handles the punting duties. And as soon as I can tell you the number on that kid, I'll tell you. But a, a high punt, yeah, all the way down inside the 30, I think right around the 25-yard line is where the fair catch is made. And the punter there, Connor Ignacio. Yeah, nice First time punt. we've seen him today. Yeah. yeah, that was a very nice punt. Forced a fair catch there, nice high punt. Yes, sir. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for Georgetown from their own 25-yard line with a minute 53 seconds to go here in quarter number three. In Grayson, Kentucky, first college football game of the season. And uh, Georgetown leads this one 35 to 7. You know, we've got a we had a great night. We've got a great night here for football. We haven't had too much conditioning. Doesn't have seemed to have been too much of a factor. A few guys have had some cramps tonight, but for the most part, sure. um, everybody seems to be in pretty good condition. Handoff up the middle. It goes for play number one here, Georgetown offense uh, in this series and nothing really ha- nothing really going there. Yeah, uh, ball loose there at the end of the play, but it looks like uh, the whistle had blown. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess he got more than I thought he did. It's going to be second down at about seven yards, so a gain of about three yards there yeah. for the Georgetown offense. Quarterback is still Drew Hurts. Hearts, excuse me. And here we go, two receivers to the right, one to the left. And quarterback's going to keep it, and he's brought down in the backfield. And, Coach, that's, it. that's uh, Sluniker. That's Gary Sluniker at uh, quarterback. Yep. So he kept the ball there, and the uh, play was blown up immediately. We're down yep. under a minute to go. Yeah, some third. quick pressure there by KCU to come up with about their third sack of the night. Yes, sir. So it's going to be third down, lost about five yards, third down 15 to go with 44 seconds in the clock running here. Trips to the right, one receiver to the left as Sloniker in the gun with a receiver or running back to his left. He's going to take the snap, step back, look way downfield, air it out, but just overthrows his receiver. Yeah, again, nice coverage out of the secondary. Uh, the uh, corners and safeties have held up very well in man coverage tonight. They have. Uh, yeah, That's they- a bright spot. It is, absolutely. They, they've done a nice job. Uh, it kind of forced uh, Georgetown into a throwing situation there. They knew what they were going to get and uh, did a nice job of uh, playing coverage and forced a punt. The clock stops on the incomplete pass as uh, with fourth, uh, fourth down, 15 yards to go from their own 20-yard line. Looks like Georgetown is going to elect to punt the ball. And to do that is Drew Rader, and we've got a whistle over on the KCU sideline and a timeout KCU. We're going to step out, take a break for the timeout. And when we return, we'll be uh, – we've got about 30 seconds left to go here in this third quarter when we get back here on the Cool Hit Sports Network. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? 
I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Are you having trouble keeping your parking lot lit? Is customer safety one of your top priorities? If so, call River City's Builders at 473-4112 for all your lighting needs. We have bucket truck and boom crane truck services. We have extensive experience in exterior lighting and parking lot lighting maintenance. No need to ever be in the dark again. Remember, call River City's Builders at 473-4112 for all your lighting needs. We will light your path to success. And a line drive punt there from uh, Georgetown means Kentucky Christian University is going to take over the football on uh, their own about 42-yard line, Coach. Yeah, again, another rugby-style punt. That, uh, they don't get quite the roll out of this one. And uh, so um, KCU take, uh, take over with reasonable field position here on the 37-yard line. Yeah, 22 seconds to go here before uh, the end of the court, uh, quarter, third quarter, that is. And here we go as the Kentucky Christian University Knights take over on offense. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, wing back to the right. And it's going to be a handoff to the deep back. That's Williams who gets over to the sideline and a gain of about 12, 13 yards. And he gets out of bounds right about the 50. So a gain of 13 and a first down and 10 KCU from the 50-yard line right at midfield with 14 seconds to go. Clock running. And I, are they going to try to run one more play, Coach? Down to nine seconds. Mm. They're running players on and off. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think they're going to take the quarter yep, here. I'm with you. So at the end of the third quarter, your score, Georgetown 35, Kentucky Christian University 7. Back after this for quarter number four here on the Cool Hits Sports Network. Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. With long rates at or near historical lows, now is the time to talk to one of the experienced loan officers at First National Bank. We can help you with that new car or home you've been wanting. Let us work with you to reach the payment level you're comfortable with. You can now access our loan application online at fnbgrayson.com or give us a call today at 606-928-0000 and we can make your loan happen. First National Bank in Cannonsburg, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back in Grayson here for the start of the fourth quarter. Uh, and, Coach, Kentucky Christian, Uni Kentucky Christian University on a little bit of a roll here offensively. Yeah, they were able to collect six first downs in that quarter, and uh, that they only had uh, five in the whole first half, so they got things rolling a little bit on offense right here. And a handoff goes to the right-hand side, the ball carrier this time around, Corey Garcia on the jet play. And uh, he's going to gain a couple yards. He's going to make it uh, – Third down or second down at about uh, about seven eight yards Se seven yards six seven yards I don't know we'll wait to see where they spot it I'm gonna quit guessing yeah down thirty five to seven again it's yeah. like we were talking about at halftime just you know who's going to keep playing you know who's going to keep playing hard right here they're going to make sure that you know that all the guys are engaged and they're they're trying to get better they're working on things there's no quit in these KCU nights and uh, you know they're working toward uh, their conference schedule a little bit later down the road. That's right, and a pass out of the backfield to the left goes to Williams. He cuts it back across, all the way across the right hash, and another one of those long runs, but uh, not much of a gain, a couple yard gain on a pretty long run. Yeah, he brought that back all the way across the field, and any time you cut back all the way across the field like that, you better have your eyes up, and uh -huh. Jacob, Brass unloaded on him right there. That's the second time that uh, he's been at the brass has come out of his uh, safety position to make a big hit. Now, he did not over pursue that and played the cut back very well right there. Five yard gain on that pass I means it's going to be third down, one yard to go. Ball on the Georgetown 41 yard line, two by two set, ball on the right hash. 
And we got motion from right to left from the number two receiver on the right. And a miscommunication in the backfield. Ball's on the ground. And we're going to wait and see who fell on it. I think Sarvis did, and he did. So it's going to be fourth down for Kentucky Christian University. Yeah. Uh, again, another one of those uh, uh, read quarterback read type runs and a little bit of ball handling issues right there, and they were lucky to fall back on it. So fourth down. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right, running back in the backfield offset to the right. In the backfield for KCU, it looks like Williams, the up back. Snap almost on the ground. Quarterback picks it up, finds Williams to the right, <laughs> and he all, fights forward almost for a first down, Coach, but I think he's going to be just a little bit shy of the first down. Yeah, uh, did a nice job of setting up a little screen pass there to him out of the backfield, and he had a little room down the right-hand side and was very close to the chains where he ran into his own receiver there uh, that looked like uh, – uh, Rucker uh, kind of blocking right there, and he ran into his own receiver and kind of knocked him out of bounds and is going to come up a yard short and yep. turn the ball over. So first down and 10 for Georgetown uh, from their own 41-yard line. So we'll see what Georgetown does here. Uh, uh, they're kind of – they have full control of the game, 35-7. to seven. They're going to keep the pressure on. We'll see. Uh, that looks like they're going to bring – they've got the first O-line still is in the game. Um uh, See what the, they do offensively. Here we go. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, but he's in motion, deep motion, across the, to the other side of the field, and it's going to be another one of the swing passes. It goes to him. Uh, he catches it. That's Josh Gary down the right sideline. He makes it to the sideline, but that's about it. Gain of about a yard. Yeah. Uh, actually, he made it back to the line of scrimmage. That was it. Sorry. No, no problem. Another nice play there by we've called uh, Latavius Johnson's name a, a number of times tonight. He did a nice job coming up from corner. Uh, and making that play. And it's going to be second down, 10 yards to go for the Tigers. And a two-by-two two set from the right hash is where the ball's spotted. And uh, in the gun is uh, Slumaker. He takes a snap, finds a receiver on the right side, right about the numbers. And it, the catch is made but for a minimal gain. Catch made there by Simon Sharp, and he gets right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it, so third down and 10. Yeah, so we'll see where they let Sloniker here kind of push the ball down the field here. Nice job playing the underneath route by, by the KCU defense. Uh -huh. And um, so third and 10, we'll see if uh, they're going to play zero. It's like they're going to play coverage here. He drops back up in a two-by-two -two set, finds a receiver, a great place ball there from Sloniker for a first down gain of about 15 yards. Yeah, a nice route there by the uh, by the H back there. That's uh, number uh, 37 on the reception there, Nate Harmon. Uh, nice little uh, what we call a bench route down about 14 or 15 yards and out. Uh, Slonner does a nice job of getting the ball over the underneath coverage but dropping it in uh, just over that coverage and underneath the safety. Two receivers left, one to the right. Wing back to the left, and it looks like Slumaker finds an open receiver kind of on a check down route right in the middle of the field, and that's going to be a decent gain on first down. You know, Simon Sharp, a little hunt route. He's just kind of hunting a place in the middle of the field there to get some open space, and uh, really impressed with uh, um, how well uh, uh, Slumaker kind of hangs in the pocket. And, uh, you know, he made a nice throw right there. There's a little traffic all around him, stepped up nice, and uh, found Sharp in the middle of the field. Another player down on the field. This one, uh, it looks like a Georgetown player. I can't get a number there, Coach. No, the trainer's kind of around him there. I'm not sure yeah. uh, who we've got down. I think that might be Simon Sharp, actually. Mm. Nonetheless, uh, Georgetown moving here a little bit offensively, converting a, uh, into a first down here and getting the ball down on the KCU side of the field. Yeah, they've done it. They just got, they kind of keep the pressure on you, you know. And then that's just, it is what you know. It is what they do. Now that's their offense. Yep. You know they're up tempo and they just kind of keep the pressure on you and they do not let you breathe. 
And uh, when they when they get it rolling, when they're getting positive yardage on first down, they're right back up on the ball. Uh, they don't let you substitute. Uh, they try to make conditioning uh, a part of the game, and uh, they try to wear you out, especially the big guys up front. And uh, the pass rush is really slowed down for, uh, for KCU right now. And here we go as uh, the injured player makes his way off of the field. And here we go, the KCU defense makes their way back out too. And we've got two, uh, two running backs in the backfield, and it's going to be a handoff to one of them, the one on the right. He goes to the left, now cuts it back to the right, and nothing doing there. He runs into a lot of people. Yeah, a whole host of uh, of, uh, of players there, a whole host of defenders from KCU, but the initial contact there, 91, Shamar Sparks, uh, the defensive end, able to kind of wrap him up and hang on to him until his buddies could get there. And that's big time, you know, on a handoff like that up the middle for, for the defensive lineman to hold their ground. That's yeah. their job. Yeah, kind of playing through the block, uh -huh. you know. You're, you're not you're not going to be unblocked very often on the D-line. That's uh, right. So he kind of plays through the block, plays off the block, and able to make a play. Handoff goes up the middle again. This one blown up again as well. Uh, this one goes to Quincy Perrin, the running back. And uh, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Yeah, I'm trying to look who made a nice stop there. Uh, I believe that's uh, 45 Mike Clark uh, in there playing linebacker right now. And I – Made a mistake there. That's not Perrin. That is Jameer Ackerson on the run. I also made a mistake. We have, <laughs> we have a, a number change there. That's Zach Thomas, a sophomore linebacker, uh, making uh -huh. that nice play. Yep. Zach Thomas, yeah. Had a, had a few number changes. You know how it goes week one. Had a few number changes. We've got a timeout Georgetown, Coach. Yeah, fourth down. They want to talk about it, see if they can keep the ball here and keep, keep this drive alive. Yes, sir. We're going to keep it here, though. Don't want to miss any action. Uh, your score remains 35-7, to seven, Georgetown on top of Kentucky Christian University with about 9.21 to go here in this football game. Yeah, they KCU has done a nice job uh, so far defending man-to-man, -man. so we'll see uh, you know, what kind of personnel comes out for uh, uh, Georgetown, and that, that'll determine what kind of call we get from, from KCU here. Um, not going to try to speculate on you know, really the play on fourth and four here. Uh, they've been able to run the ball effectively. Uh, they've been able to throw it pretty effectively, so not going to try to guess uh, what they're doing. Sure. Uh, Personnel-wise, they do come out uh, with uh, with three receivers to the right, a tight end, and one back. And here we go. Ball in the middle of the field. Trips to the right-hand side. And a We've got a running back to the right-hand side of the quarterback and a designed run there, I believe, uh, by the quarterback. That is Sluniker, who enjoys running the ball, and he just ran for a first down. Yeah, just a quarterback ISO play there. They kind of get them spread out with the receivers, and um, you know, they might have had a little misalignment there from uh, the KCU. The coaches here in the booth next to us a little upset with the alignment, but uh, – uh, give them a, a B-gap uh, isolation play there from the quarterback and a really an easy pickup. Absolutely. First down, Georgetown. Ball on the KCU 28. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and we've got a deep motion from the number two receiver on the right and a handoff up the middle for Georgetown. He's going to go for a game, but not much of a game. That's Quincy Perrin on the carry, and I believe he's going to – Pick up about two yards. So second down, eight yards to go from the 26-yard line now as KCU makes some personnel changes on defense. Two-by-two two set here for, I take that back, two receivers left, one to the right, and a tight end or a wing back to the right-hand side as well. Quarterback takes the ball, hands off on a, jet type play over right toward the Georgetown sideline. It's going to be a pretty good game on second down here. Not enough for the first. It'll make it third down and short uh, for Georgetown. Again, Georgetown spreading the wealth uh, as far as their running backs pairing in right now, uh, getting most of the carries, and they're right back up on the ball. 
Yep, and a quick handoff again on third down. That one goes right up the middle. Uh, again, uh, handed off to Perrin, and it's going to be close to a first down. Haven't seen a signal yet. Cameron Arthur makes a, you know, uh, the, the play there up the middle. Kind of, they had it blocked up pretty good, but Cameron stepped up in the hole, made a, a quick tackle, and that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to get an illegal substitution call yep. against um, uh, against KCU, and that's going to give Georgetown a, another free first down. That's the second one of those uh, in this quarter, I believe. Yep. So it's going to be first down and 10 yards to go for the Georgetown. They're in the red zone now, and they're on, the ball's on the 14-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right, a wing back on the left side, deep back to the right of the quarterback. Quarterback in the game, Gary Sluniker. Motion to the left from that deep back. Handoff goes to him, and he's going to fight forward for a few yards, letting that clock roll down. And, that, and if you're Georgetown, that's your goal right now. Yep. You're ahead 35-7. to seven. Keep nickel and diamond moving the ball down the field and let that ball let that clock run out. And the fifth running back to carry the ball tonight for, yeah. <laughs> for Isn't that uh, something? Georgetown and all of them look good. Uh, that was Jameer Ackerson right there. And uh he he got up in there behind that big offensive line, kept his shoulders square and his legs moving and pushed the pile for about five yards. Had a player down there, coach, uh, but he's up he's walking off the field on his own accord. That's Trez Hopkins. Yep. Making his way off to the sideline. Called his name a couple of times tonight. Absolutely. A couple of pass breakups and a couple of tackles. Yes, sir. KCU defense stays out on the field. Uh, the Georgetown offense had a chance to go over and meet with the offensive coordinator. Now, now, now they're back out. We've got receivers to the left side, only, only to the left side, none to the right, three to the left. And Sloniker finds an open receiver in the back of the end zone to his left. That's Ladarian Montgomery catching the ball there on the 10-yard touchdown. Yeah, a nice little combination right there to the trip side. The two outside receivers on hard slant routes. Uh, and uh, Ladarian runs a nice little corner route in behind him. Ball well thrown. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, the coverage not as good as we've seen earlier tonight and a pretty easy throw and catch for the Tigers. Uh, touchdown. Yep, touchdown Georgetown with 6.36 to go here. And here comes the PAT attempt to tack on one more, and it's good. That makes it 41-7 to here with six and a, uh, just a little over six and a half to go here in quarter number four of this football game. Georgetown with another nice drive, put together a nice combination of, uh, of run and pass. Uh, they do a really good job of mixing it up. Uh, not, only, not only run and pass, but mixing up the tempo, and uh, they're going to be a handful for a, lot of, uh, for a lot of teams this year. Yes, sir, and I think I said the score was 41-7. to It's 42-7. to Yeah. Forgot to add that one extra point on there. 42-7 to is the score with six and a half to go. Yeah, so, again, this is uh, – this is a time where you're going to focus on your on yourself. Sure, Coach Russell's just going to tag, going to get another offensive possession. Uh, it's it's gut a, check time. That's right. It's a it's a long season. Everybody's sure. a little deflated down there right now. Uh, you want to get out again. Now's the time of, of the game where you start thinking about making sure you get out with no injuries. You know, try to keep them uh, from getting too banged up. But at the same time, you got to take these reps. You know, these are our game speed reps. Uh, that you can't get in practice, and they're going to use every one of them uh, to try to get themselves, uh, uh, try to get their operation uh, working a little bit better. There you go. And, and like you said, the football season is a, is a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely. Long way to go. Yep. Uh, by the time we get to November, this uh, this one will be in the rearview mirror, and uh, hopefully you can take some lessons from it that will help going to help you down the, line, down the road. There you go. Good kickoff there. It lands inside the 20 where it's caught. And a hard hit there on the return. Gets it across the 25 to about the 27, and a couple players collide there. And everybody's up, everybody's okay. The return there from Devontae Williams. Uh, 
Ball's going to be spotted on about the 28-yard line of KCU, and that's where – they will take over. We do. Ha I do see a flag out there, Coach. Yeah, that that flag was thrown in uh, pretty deep from behind the Georgetown cover team. Yeah. Uh, we'll see uh, what uh, what kind of penalty we get here. Often, when it comes from that from that side, it is a uh, is a blocking infraction. That's what I'm thinking. Blocking the back or something. Holding. Holding. There you go. That was that was it was far away from the ball too. So I'll, I'll be honest, I was watching the return. Yeah, I did not see I did yeah. not see the actual infraction, but yep. uh, the uh, the field judge uh, in the back behind uh, the the cover team uh, called that from a he showed a pretty good arm when he threw that flag. Yeah, about evidently. thirty yards. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll moving back to the nineteen yard line. That's where they'll take over here. The KCU offense two by two uh, set here uh, for a quarterback. As he drops back, looks to his left, and it's going to be incomplete. So he had a little time to throw right there. Stepped up in the in the pocket, pretty nice, and uh, uh, hit uh, uh, Demarion Lane. Yeah, uh, that's Deulio back at quarterback too. I was yeah. trying to make sure there. Yeah, yeah, Louis with a nice throw right there, and he hit uh, hit Lane uh, in a pretty good spot. He just kind of dropped it there on the in breaking route. That's a ball that um, uh, he normally catches, and I'm sure he'd be the first to tell you that uh, that he could have caught that ball. No question. Two by two set. Deulio calls for a motion from his number two receiver on the right, and it's going to be another one of those little shovel passes, or not shovel passes, but he's off to the races nonetheless. Down the down the Georgetown sideline goes Austin Mullins, and that's a big gain. He goes from the 19 yard line all the way to the Georgetown. Uh, ball's going to be spotted on about the Georgetown 36-yard oh, line. So do the math there. That's about a let's see, about a 35-yard gain. Yeah, a nice, uh, a nice, uh, well-placed ball there. That kind of same uh, swing screen that we see uh, Georgetown use effectively tonight. Uh, kind of uh, turn the tables on them, and uh, they hit it for a nice gain. Absolutely. Two by two set here for Louis DeUlio with a running back to his right. He takes a snap, drops back. Looks downfield, finds an open receiver in the middle of the field. Uh, uh, great place ball there. He had a window, and he he, he took it. And the uh, ball caught there by Karan Taylor for a first down. Same and, play that uh, they dropped earlier, except Taylor hangs on to it this time. And, and uh, Dooley over there, he's got, a, he's got a live arm. He does. Uh, he he does. Shot, stepped up in the pocket nice and shot that thing in there. Yep. And he's got him on the move. The sophomore quarterback uh, coming in, taking taking control here. Two by two set. Running back to his right, Louie calls for motion here from DT Gideon, and he gets it, then dumps the ball over to his right. And that's going to be a gain of uh, about four or five yards here, Coach, on first down. I'm trying to figure out who caught that ball. Christopher Dennis. Okay. First time we've called his name that I remember tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he did a nice job of uh, finding an open area there. Uh, the Julio uh, kind of setting up the screen, drawing in the pressure to himself and dumps it over uh, to Dennis, who's uh, able to make a nice run after catch. No doubt about it. Picked up about five yards. It's going to be uh, four to five yards. It's going to be second down at about five to go, a long uh, five that is. Deulio takes it and tries to get it downfield. Tries to find uh, Mullins down there in the end zone, but he throws it into double coverage. Yeah, uh, double coverage right there, playing a little too deep zone. Uh, no underneath uh, route there to hold the corner. He kind of folds back underneath that route while Brass, the safety, uh, had it from the over the top and uh, kind of lucky maybe there that, uh, uh, that he didn't get that one intercepted. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's going to be – Third down now for the Knights as they're uh, looking to get some more points on the board here. Clock down under five minutes uh, in the game. 4.48 to be exact. 42-7 to seven is the score. Trips to the left as Delio takes the snap, fires it over to the left side, caught by Karan Taylor, who moves ahead enough for the first down gain of about eight yards, Coach. Yeah, a little uh, three or four yard pass and he turned into an eight or nine yard gain. Uh, did a nice job of getting, uh, after he caught that ball, turned over his right shoulder down the boundary, makes a hard run for the first down. Yeah, first down and 10 yards to go from the Georgetown 13 yard line. Clock rolling down to four and a half in the ball game as Louis Deulio 
Stays in at quarterback, running back on his right, motions over to his left, trips to the right, and he's going to hand it off, and it's going to be a sweet play. The running back gets the edge and moves ahead for, I believe it's going to be a touchdown, Kentucky Christian University. Yes, sir. And running back there is junior uh, Josh Trailer, who's going to get his first, down, first touchdown of the night. Yeah, he makes a really nice run. He gets the edge. Uh, gets downhill, and then uh, there's some contact right at the goal line there, but he lowers his shoulder and moves the, moves the corner into the end zone, keeps his leg uh, driving, kind of excites his crowd a little bit. They're glad to see the Knights get on the board. Absolutely they are. As uh, KCU comes, comes out for a, PA, a PAT attempt here with uh, 4.15 to go on the clock, and the kick is up. Not a pretty kick. And it's no good. Did somebody get a hand on that, Coach? I don't think so. I just think okay. he kind of pulled that to the left a little bit. I'm not sure where our boy Rodriguez has went to tonight. I don't know if he had an injury uh, or uh, what. That's not the regular kicker for the no. Knights. No, I was trying to get a number, and I couldn't there. Nonetheless, uh, your score, 42-13 to 13 here with 4.15 to go in the ball game. And uh, – yeah, I, I, I kind of thought maybe they were just trying to give another kicker a, a, a look. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, I, we haven't had any reports of uh, Rodriguez being injured or anything. But, uh, right. But um, they may have just been giving him uh, that young man a rep there in a game situation. Sure. Um, I actually, I see Paul down here, Rodriguez, and uh, he's in street clothes. He's on the sideline wearing his jersey. But uh, So, hope everything's okay with him. Yeah. 4.15 to go. Georgetown leads Kentucky Christian University 42 to 13. Don't go away after the game. We hope to get uh, uh, have a conversation here on the air with uh, KCU head coach Jake Russell. So uh, stick around for that uh, as uh, we'll try to get with him. Make no promises, but we hope to, hope to talk to him. Georgetown kickoff return team out on the field and the KCU kickoff team is out there as well. Georgetown's got their good hands team out there. They're maybe expecting uh, uh, an onside kick here. They've got six guys on the front line with three uh, three receivers uh, just behind them for five yards. I'm still trying to get a number on that kicker, Coach. It looks like 27, 27. and neither one, they have two 27s listed. <laughs> neither one of them are a kicker, so I don't know. Nonetheless, a decent kickoff. It crosses the 30 anyway, and a fair catch made by Dylan Warren at around the 30-yard line, and that's where Georgetown will take over with 4.13 to go. So, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, taking advantage of these game reps and not sure. quitting right there, and that's a perfect example, that last drive uh, by KCU and uh -huh. uh, not just folding the tent right there. Absolutely. You know, they did a good job. They had a, a nice couple of pass plays there, a couple of in-breaking routes they were able to complete, a couple of nice runs, a couple of new uh, fresh faces in the game right there. Yep. And uh, everybody's still playing hard and taking advantage uh, of those reps. <clears throat> You just don't get in practice. You just can't simulate uh, working against another team in practice. So, good sure. to see them take advantage of that. And, you know, as a coach, uh, there are always those coaching th points that you that you focus on when you're watching film and things like that. But you want to have some positives, too, and that's a positive. Absolutely. Put points on the board this week. Put late. some points on the board, get some new guys in there, get them on film, and uh, able to coach them up this week. Absolutely. Handoff goes to the right-hand side. Uh, for a gain of about four to five yards here, four yards, so second down and – no, it's going to be five yards, so second down and five from the 30-yard line for Georgetown as we're under four minutes to go in the ball game. Yeah, I'm starting to see some new faces on defense for uh, KCU right now. Uh -huh. They've substituted several of uh, their defensive linemen. We've got two new corners in the game right now. You know, so they're, they're trying to get some other kids on film on uh, the defensive side of the ball also. Several new faces offensively for Georgetown, but uh, Drew Hart's back in the game. Yep. Quarterback, starting quarterback. Tied into the right and one receiver to the right, two wide receivers to the left. Hart's in the gun, and it's going to be a little shovel pass out of the backfield. He's going to get it over to Quincy Perrin, who marches ahead, gets the edge, and marches ahead for about a 10-yard gain, gets him out to the 
45-yard line. That's where it will be first down Georgetown. I'm telling you, I don't care who's playing running back for Georgetown. Yeah, they got a whole group of guys there that can, yeah. they can really run the ball. Yeah, they you have know. a whole core of, run, of yeah. running backs. Don't I don't they? know who you would say the number one guy is. It doesn't really matter. I'm with uh, you. You know, all those guys have, have carried the ball very effectively tonight. They've caught the ball out of the backfield some. Uh, but uh, Neil, Cobb, Perrion, all those guys have uh, have been really good tonight. Sure. We'll talk, we'll talk, go over the stats and stuff because uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 100% with you. We'll talk about that after the game. Down under two, under, under three minutes to go as Hartz takes the hand off, hands it off up the middle, nothing going. But I do see a flag over here on the KCU sideline. Yeah, we might have had, uh, might have had somebody get an early start there uh, yeah, to I get in so. the backfield. Yep. I think we're going to have a, an offsides on KCU. We'll wait for the official call. There it is. And there it is. <laughs> so it'll be first down five yards to go from midfield for Georgetown. 2.43 to go. Sorry, Coach. First time several new offensive linemen, a second group of offensive line is in for uh, – uh, in for Georgetown right now. That first group did a great job tonight. Yes, they were yes. able to uh, give both quarterbacks plenty of time. Uh, they gave both uh, all the running backs some uh, some open windows, and uh, those guys take care of business when they catch a seam. Yeah, no doubt about that. Two receivers right, one to the left, a handoff out of the backfield. He crosses over, goes to the left, does Perrin, and he gets down to – about the 44-yard line, enough for another first down Georgetown. That's where they'll uh, set up shop there. And first and 10 for the Tigers. Nice tackle there by the, the KCU corner to come up and, and make that play. Sure. That's a, a young corner right there, sophomore, six foot, 160-pound Dustin Drog uh, with, a, with a nice tackle on a bigger running back. Yeah, absolutely. Intestinal fortitude, Coach. It takes some guts to take that. No, take, I, yeah. Take him on. Yep. Hand off to the right this time out of the backfield to Perrin. He fights ahead. Makes it back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a couple. In about three. I feel like Georgetown has kind of gone into their four-minute offense here. Yeah. Just kind of yep. running the ball, keeping, yep. uh, keeping it in bounds, making sure this clock keeps rolling. You know, they want to get out of here again. Without They've got the game well in hand, obviously, at this point. They want to get out of here with, with, without any injuries. That's right. As the clock almost down to a minute to go in this game, still rolling here, second down and seven yards to go. I think we can expect another handoff here. Got another handoff. It goes to Perrin, and he's got some room to run. He found a little seam there. And he's down inside the five, and that's going to be a touchdown, Georgetown. I'm not sure that was pairing, Coach, and I think it's going to come back. I think you're right. Uh, we got a holding call on the offense, so that means uh, the touchdown – was no good, and the ball's coming back here to about midfield. Yeah, just a simple uh, inside zone handoff there, and uh, but uh, somebody got a that second team offensive line got a got a handful of jersey there, and uh, they're going to bring that one back. Yes, sir, and you are correct. That's Jameer Ackerson who just made it on the field. That's number thirty-one, not thirty-three. Yeah, I don't have an excuse on that one. The you, the, the white white jerseys, black numbers are pretty easy to see. <laughs> yeah, Ackerson, uh, another another. One of those guys in the backfield that can uh, – he showed some uh, speed there. When he hit that seam, he turned it on and was through the KCU secondary in a hurry. Yeah. And that uh, holding uh, negates a pretty long run. Second down and a lot to go. And we're going to have – believe this is going to be it, Coach. Are they going to take a knee here yep. in the victory formation? Yes, sir. They have to do it one more time, 49 seconds to go. Yeah. I believe so. I don't know. They're going to hold the play clock here maybe and let it get and maybe make that the last play. Yeah. And they did. They did. Now they held the play clock for them, so that'll do it. That means your final score for this ball game, uh, the first college football game of the 2022 season, Georgetown comes out on top 48, no, 42 
to 13. They put that touchdown up and didn't take it off the scoreboard. That's what I get for looking at the scoreboard. 42 to 13. That's going to be your final for this ball game. So don't go away, though. The game's over, but we got a whole lot of stats and a whole lot of statistics, that kind of thing. But Coach Jake Russell is going to be joining us, we hope. So don't go away. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members' Choice Credit Union. Members' Choice Credit Union has programs for first-time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members' Choice Credit Union today. Members' Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. In addition to the Greenup location, Stultz Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hanna Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy. With the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hanna Drive, South Shore. Stultz Pharmacy. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around back in grace in kentucky final score for the evening georgetown 42 kentucky christian university 13. we'll tell you how we got there the first touchdown of the game scored in the first quarter by georgetown it was in with 824 left to go in the first uh four yard uh touchdown pass from drew hearts to aaron maggard uh, followed by chris klein pat made the score seven to zero with 8.24 to go in the first. Next touchdown came about two minutes later in the first, a 43-yard touchdown pass from Drew Hartz to Josh Gary, and a Chris Klein PAT made it 14-0, and that was the score at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, uh, another Georgetown touchdown came with 14.57 uh, to go on the clock, a one-yard touchdown run by Isaiah Cobb, and a Chris Klein PAT made it 21-0. Uh, KCU answered, got some points on the board with 12.04 to go in the second quarter. Uh, Seven-yard touchdown run by Devontae Williams, followed by Paul Rodriguez. Uh, PAT made it 21-7. to seven. Uh, Georgetown answered, though, about 10 minutes later, uh, 10 minutes on the clock later, I should say, with uh, a 17-yard touchdown pass from Gary Slunicker to Aaron Maggard, followed by Chris Klein, PAT, made it 28-7, to and that was a score going into the half. Uh, less scoring in the second half. Uh, first touchdown came with 10, came quick in the third quarter with 10.59 to go. It was a RPO pass from Drew Hartz to Simon Sharp, a 14-yard touchdown pass, followed by Chris Klein, PAT, made it 35-7, to uh, which was the score until – Six minutes and 36 seconds to go in the ball game. A 10-yard touchdown pass from Gehrig Shuniker to Ladarian Montgomery, followed by Chris Klein, PAT, made it 42-7. to With 4.15 to go in the ball game, uh, KCU able to tack some more points on the board. Uh, a 13-yard touchdown run by Josh Trailer, followed by a missed PAT, made the score, uh, the final score of the evening, 42-13, to 13, Georgetown uh, defeats the Kentucky Christian University Knights. We're going to step out, take another break. When we return, Coach Terry will have a whole lot of stats uh, for us, and we hope to hear 
possibly from KCU head coach Jake Russell. Don't go away. Back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. Does your gas station or convenience store need a facelift? If so, call River City Builders at 473-4112 for your remedy. Big or small projects, River City's Builders is a company for all your needs. We have extensive experience in the petroleum industry, from routine gas dispenser and canopy maintenance to above-ground, underground tank and piping work to full-blown remodels and new builds. Call River City Builders at 473-4112 for all your petroleum needs. We'll cover your back and keep your customers pumping gas. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Jennifer Epperly, Loan Officer at First National Bank in Cannonsburg. I personally invite you and all local businesses to visit our beautiful new building in Cannonsburg on U.S. Route 60 next to the Walmart entrance. We offer many services including personal, mortgage, and business loans. First National Bank is locally owned by the McGuire family of Ashland and has been in business since 1902. We aim to give you the personal attention and best customer service there is to offer. Come inside, talk with us, and let us make you a part of the First National Bank family. First National Bank, Equal Housing Lender, Member FDI. Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of Eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. And we're back in Grayson. Final score for the evening, 42-13. Uh, Georgetown defeats Kentucky Christian University. And Coach Brent Terry now has some stats uh, for this ball game. All right. Thank you, Chauncey. Uh, like I said, 42-13 is a final score. Some uh, in-game stats here. Uh, we'll go down Georgetown first. Uh, they make uh, 26 uh, first downs on the evening. Uh, they're able to uh, rush up for uh, 107 yards on 40 carries. Uh, they throw for 224, uh, total uh, 30, uh, 38 attempts, 26 completions. Uh, they ran a, a pretty impressive 78 offensive plays for a total of 331 yards. Um, they were uh, 8 of 17 on third down and 3 of 3 on fourth down. That makes them 11 out of 20 there on the money downs. Uh, that Those are, are important downs, and they'll be impressed with being over 50% uh, on those downs. Um, they uh, were also able to convert, convert five out of six times in the red zone. Uh, on KCU side, um, they uh, came away with only 15 uh, first downs, uh, rushed the ball 24 times for 81 yards and threw it for 195. Their quarterbacks were a combined 17 to 35, uh, 59 total offensive plays, which was much better in the, in the second half. They only ran nine plays in the first quarter, so to get that up to uh, the 50 plays in the next three quarters uh, was, uh, was good to see from the KCU side. They end up with a total of 276 yards uh, on the evening uh, however they were just uh, four of 13 on third down and only one of four on fourth down something that i'm sure they'll look at uh, this week uh, when uh, uh, practice rolls around converting uh, uh, trying to get those uh, third and fourth down conversions up they were two of two in the red zone uh, individually tonight a three-headed monster in the backfield for georgetown uh, quincy perrin Darius Neal and Isaiah Cobb, uh, they uh, they had the majority of the carries uh, for the Tigers. Uh, Perrin goes for goes for uh, 45 yards uh, on 10. Uh, Neal goes for 37 on six, uh, and uh, Cobb goes for 34 on 12 carries. Uh, those guys uh, were able to keep the chains moving, uh, and even though uh, they threw the ball um, uh, about 11 more times, excuse me, uh, they threw the ball. Um, a few more times, uh, 12 more times than they ran the ball. Uh, I thought it was very important that they were able to keep the sticks moving and keep uh, the KCU defense honest with their run game. Um, individually for their quarterbacks, uh, both uh, uh, Drew Hart and uh, Sloniker saw considerable action 
Uh, Hartz was uh, 17 out of 24 for 156 yards and three touchdowns. Um, had a 43 long, uh, 43 yards uh, for his longest uh, pass completion. Uh, Sloniker uh, completed nine out of 14 for 78 yards and two touchdowns. So both of those guys very effective, and uh, they were uh, kept pretty clean by that uh, big, strong offensive line uh, that opened up. Uh, they did a good job of opening up some running lanes. They also did a good job of keeping both quarterbacks uh, pretty much pressure-free for most of the night. Uh, Receiving-wise uh, for uh, Georgetown, uh, Gary Sharp and uh, Maggard uh, all caught balls. Um, uh, Gary with five catches, Sharp with four. Uh, Jacob Imes with uh, eleven, or excuse me, with three uh, catches. Uh, Maggard also with three catches. Uh, on the KCU side. Um, Individually rushing the ball, uh, Williams, uh, with uh, he comes in with nine uh, attempts, which is the most of anybody uh, for the KCU, uh, has uh, a net of 56 yards rushing. Uh, Desmond Daly uh, with 12 rushing yards. Gerald Daniels adds 11, and uh, Tyler Hass uh, three. Uh, also in there. Uh, two quarterbacks uh, both played also for uh, the Knights tonight, uh, Sarvis and Tyler Hass. Uh, we uh, we looked uh, we we uh, may have missed a little bit of that. We thought yeah. maybe that um, uh, uh, Louis uh, De Ulio, De Ulio, yeah, they had him listed. Okay. Yeah, they had him listed there. Well, but then we, uh, Tyler Haas. Yeah, yeah, Tyler Haas uh, may have uh, been in there some. Again, the the numbers for the KCU Knights jersey are very difficult to see, uh, but on the stat sheet anyway, uh, he's credited with uh, seven. Uh, um, completions out 11 attempts, uh, while Sarvis uh, was 20, uh, was, excuse me, was 10 out of 24 with two interceptions. So, um, uh, you know, when you look at the stats, I think it comes down to the the one that really jumps out to me is the fact that Georgetown runs 78 plays offensively, and they kind of dominated uh, uh, with their offense out on the field, keeping that KCU defense kind of wearing them down as the night went along. Um, time of possession was obviously in Georgetown's favor, uh, 35 minutes and 22 seconds compared to 24, 38 uh, for the KC Knights, and uh, several minutes of that uh, came uh, later in the game. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's your uh, statistical breakdown for the, tonight. Uh, Coach, you did an awesome job there. <laughs> thanks, thanks for uh, taking that on. Hey, we're going to step out and take another break, and uh, when we return, we hope to be joined by Coach Jake Russell. Uh, don't go away back after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. When you want real, authentic Mexican menu items, you want Tres Hermanos Nunez. Accept no substitutes. None compares. Fajitas, tacos, burritos, quesadillas, chimichangas, even vegetarian choices. A kid's menu, desserts, and salads, a tasty, budget-pleasing selection for you and your family, unlike any others, should be your first and only choice for authentic Mexican all throughout the tri-state. Ashland, Greenham, Grayson, Paintsville, Canova, South Point, Olive Hill, and Cannonsburg. Tres Hermanos Nunez, the best around. You know, financial security begins at home with home ownership. If you've been putting off looking for a home because you think you can't afford it, you owe it to yourself to check out Members Choice Credit Union. Members Choice Credit Union has programs for first-time home buyers and more to help put you in the home of your dreams. Call, click, or stop by Members Choice Credit Union today. Members Choice Credit Union, NMLS 411945, Equal Housing Lender. Call for additional information. Other restrictions may apply. In addition to the Greenup location, Stelts Pharmacy's newest location is at 437 James Hanna Drive in South Shore, but has retained the name you know and love, McDonald Pharmacy. With the same great service you'll find in the Greenup location, with free delivery service and their convenient drive through Get your vaccinations and allergy shots, and of course, great prescription service. At Stultz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy, James Hanna Drive, South Shore. Stultz Pharmacy. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm trying to stay cooler in my man cave. Well, this is a beer cave, and you can't stay in this cooler forever. But Clark's Pub and Shop can get you through the dog days of summer. Whether it's fountain drinks at the lowest price or you're filling up the cooler for the family and friends, Clark's has the widest selection, the best prices, and the most helpful staff you'll find anywhere. Beat the heat at Clark's Pub and Shop. Return, refresh, refuel. Final score for the evening is KCU falls to the Georgetown Tigers by a score of 42 to 13, Coach. 
And uh, next up for uh, KCU, who, who do they have next up on their uh, schedule, Cook? Thomas Moore coming up on uh, Saturday, uh, September the 3rd at 1.30. Uh, that will be right here uh, on the campus uh, of KCU. Uh, so that will be uh, uh, another uh, in-state school. Yeah, uh, Thomas Moore. Yeah, uh -huh. Thomas Moore. So uh, be interesting. So, I believe that's an uh, – is that an AAC? I don't know. We'll find that out. We'll let you know on the next broadcast. How about that? Yeah. Uh, as far as Georgetown goes, uh, they have uh, Bluefield coming up. Uh, that'll be at home. They're also at uh, Saturday, uh, September 3rd uh, at 1.30. And that and Bluefield, I do know, is the, the number two preseason ranked team in the AAC right behind uh, Reinhardt. So, a pretty tough. That ought to be a pretty good ball game, I would think. Uh, again, you said next Saturday, the 3rd, uh, KCU plays Thomas Moore here at 1.30. That'll be a home game, mm -hmm. and we'll be here bringing you all the action yep. uh, on the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV. And also, don't forget tomorrow night, a uh, whole slew of uh, high school football games here on the Cool Hit Sports Network. And, again, you can go to coolhits1057.com and uh, find the sports schedule there. And w once you find that sports schedule and – when you find the game you want to want to listen to, just click on the blue link beside the game, and it'll take you right to it. It's pretty convenient. You can also get on the Cool Hits app for uh, any device. Um, Coach, uh, we're going to step out, take one more break, and Coach Russell is on his way. We're going to take a, a short break, and we'll be back right after this on the Cool Hits Sports Network. Need some extra money for home improvements or other purchases? How about a home equity line of credit with absolutely no closing costs? We have some exciting news from our loan department at First National Bank. Right now, open a home equity line of credit at First National and we will pay all the fees at closing. Hurry into one of our eight locations to take advantage of this great offer. First National Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Does your gas station or convenience store need a facelift? If so, call River City Builders at 473-4112 for your remedy. Big or small projects, River City's Builders is a company for all your needs. We have extensive experience in the petroleum industry, from routine gas dispenser and canopy maintenance to above-ground, underground tank and piping work to full-blown remodels and new builds. Call River City Builders at 473-4112 for all your petroleum needs. We'll cover your back and keep your customers pumping gas. When you have business away from home or a planned event far from your comfort zone, you're probably going to need a little help. Let a and Porta Potties assist you with all your portable toilet needs. Whether on a construction site, planning for an outdoor wedding, or any other outdoor event, a and Porta Potties are here to assist you. a and Porta Potties also rents out storage containers, office containers, cooling fans, tables, and chairs. a and Porta Potties, there is no event too big or too small for us to accommodate you. Kentucky Christian University is a private nonprofit university located in the beautiful foothills of eastern Kentucky. KCU offers both undergraduate and graduate programs, including the new Teacher Leader Master of Arts in Education degree. They also have an array of competitive sports. Kentucky Christian University is committed to focusing on Christ while helping students build character and prepare for their future careers. Visit kcu.edu to learn more or to schedule a visit on campus. And we're back here in Grayson. We're now joined by KCU head coach, Coach Jake Russell. Uh, thanks for coming up, Coach. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate you guys having me on. So, uh, following that game, what are, your, what are your thoughts immediately coming out of that? Yeah, just told the team that's what a uh, top ten team in the country looks like that has a head coach that won a national title two years ago. Yep. You know, that's what, you know, is the gold standard. That's what you desire to be. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that – the talent difference was was very big and uh, and obvious, and that we just didn't have enough talent to win a football game tonight. But it's all those small things that we preach on our team uh, every day throughout the week, just the small discipline things. Um, you know, and, and our team just finding their identity. While we've got you know a lot of older guys, um, just the uniqueness of college football right now, especially with the COVID, where everybody got some extra years and semesters to use. Uh, we do have a lot of young guys out there, but we also have a lot of guys who haven't played college football in a couple years and. Um, at times tonight, that's what it looks like. And uh, this is our first game also as a new staff. We've got right. uh, seven new members on the staff, got a staff of 10 this year. And uh, also us just, you know, perfecting our craft as a, 
as a as a coaching staff and, and when the lights come on the people get in the stands and they turn the scoreboard on and keep score a lot of those small things that might get overlooked or just kind of taken for granted in practice really come to light and that's what excites me the most is just building and learning off of those things you know in the, in the pregame you talked about focusing on yourselves you know about about you know what's the, it's about kcu and as the game wore on i didn't think i thought everybody continued to play really hard it played with passion you know especially in the second half able to string some uh first downs together and made some you know made some adjustments offensively um you know just how, how do you feel about the effort from the guys tonight yeah we don't have an effort problem the That's majority right. of our guys they play very hard they love the game they want to compete um you know and the big thing is there when you when you the game gets to a point where you know that the chances of you winning are pretty slim. You're really just searching for those guys that you know you're going to want out there um, with you the rest of the season. I told the team before the game that you know the numbers on the scoreboard, um, you know, those weren't as important as just the overall night itself and what we're trying to accomplish this year. Everything we want to accomplish from a conference championship, making the playoffs for the first time, uh, winning a national title, being ranked in the top ten for the first time, beating a top ten team for the first time. All those are still there for us, and all those are very much um, within reach this year. But I also told them this is the best um, football conference outside of Division One, Division One AA, and maybe high Division Two football. And you got to come every single week and bring it. Um, this is the SEC of small school football. You don't get a week off. So I'm looking forward, honestly, to see how our guys respond. I I, I cannot agree more, Coach. And, and you know, I, Coach and I, Coach Terry and I were talking in the pregame and. Uh, I talked to Coach David Manning, the athletic director. Just, just, just sitting here in the press box watching you guys warm up, this is a different look KCU team. Uh, talk about that atmosphere, man. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think the talent is obvious. Uh, this coaching staff has done an absolutely phenomenal job getting the talent here, getting them eligible, uh, just all those things that it takes. You know, everybody shows up on game day and just sees them. But, man, there's a whole process, not just, you know, you first talk to a guy. I mean, man, it's it's – Many, many phone calls, texts, messages, admissions process, eligibility process, and all those things to actually get them on the field. And at a small school, you know, we're involved in every single aspect of that. And it's actually just so rewarding to see guys. Uh, there's actually a couple guys I've coached at other schools that ended up here. There's some guys that just have some amazing testimonies that are back on the field, like I said, for the first time in a few years and went out here and fought and competed. And, and uh, I, I just told the team, you know, rally around those guys. If there's if there's 12 of us right now, let's get, get with these 12. Let's grow it to 13. Let's grow it to 20. Let's grow it to 40. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see where we're going to be at uh, next Saturday on the 3rd. Well, that's I was going to bring that up next Saturday on the 3rd, 130. Thomas Moore, what do you know about him? They're going to be really good. They're in the Mid-South Conference. They're transitioning to Division II next year, uh, growing up Kentucky. I know they always get a lot of good talent out of Kentucky, specifically Northern Kentucky. Um, they're going to be a good football team. Like I said earlier, you don't get many, many uh, weeks on your schedule in this conference where you look at it and say, oh, man, there's an easy win. I'm not sure we have any this year. So um, I think they play Saturday. Of course, we'll watch it and we'll, we'll prepare, get a scouting report ready for our guys. I think that's very exciting, too, to actually you know have – the film to watch and have a little bit of a, of a plan going in uh, more than we did tonight. And uh, just really, again, honing our craft as a coaching staff in that aspect, um, but also seeing how our, how, our, how our team matures and who they end up being this season. That's always great to see. Yeah, it's really tough, I think, in college football. You don't get a scrimmage game like we did in high school mm -hmm. when I coached high school football. So to see the whole operation, you know, went, went pretty well tonight. Special teams, you know, uh, getting guys in and out of the game, substitution packages and all that kind of stuff. Feel pretty good about that? Or, where, you know, what do you look at? Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, we all – the old cliche is you make a big jump between that week one and week two. And where do you look to, to make those jumps? Yeah, just the organization and efficiency <laughs> of uh, getting guys on and off the field, special teams, play calling – you know, game management, all those things. I told the team, uh, I said, you know, I've been a head coach for barely a year, and I know I look like it a lot of times in your guys' eyes. I said, just meet me halfway. We'll both fight our butts off and compete, and uh, we'll make up for those little mistakes where, you know, I might not be the best head coach, but my team will have my back, and we'll play as hard as anybody else and prepare as hard as anybody else. And, you know, that'll win you a lot of games. And then you throw some talent in there. Uh, you throw some phenomenal assistant coaches in there, which I've got that can really recruit their butts off. And that's when the championships start to come. Coach, that's good stuff. You got anything else, Coach Terry? No, it's exciting to see the guys play tonight. Uh, they played with uh, a lot of heart, a lot of passion. 
uh, no quitting those guys and uh, look forward to teeing it up again here in a few days uh, on the third. Yes, yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Yep. Look forward to see you again. Coach. Absolutely. Coach, you make you make it easy to root for you guys, your philosophy. I, yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Hey, that's going to do it for uh, for this broadcast. Uh, again, final score for the evening, 42 to 13. Uh, Georgetown defeats Kentucky Christian University. Don't forget tomorrow evening, uh, got several games on the high school uh, high school uh, football network here on the Cool Hit Sports Network. And until next week, next uh, ne- I guess next time you and I will be broadcasting together will be next Saturday. Is that right? Yeah, se- yeah September the 3rd. There you go. Yep, right so back here. Until yep. then, thank you, Coach. My pleasure. I'll Thanks be, for having me. I'll be back tomorrow evening, uh, Greenup County and Mark County. Don't forget to check out that sports schedule. And until then, good night and God bless. You've been listening to Kentucky Christian University football on the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV. This KCU football game has been brought to you by Kentucky Christian University, River City's Builders, A&A Porter Potters, Trey Hermanas Nunez Mexican Restaurant, First National Bank of Grayson and Cannonsburg, Members Choice Credit Union, Stoltz Pharmacy in Greenup and McDonald Pharmacy in South Shore, and Clark's Pup and Shops of the Tri-State. KCU Football is a special sports presentation of the Cool Hit Sports Network and Cool TV.